Oh, we're very happy. Louis C.K. in studio. He's got his new show, Louis, on FX, starting a week from uh, tomorrow at 11 o'clock, right after Rescue Me. And uh, you didn't even know, but they sent the first four episodes to us. Yeah. And I checked it out. I brought it down to Philly, and uh, everyone that was watching it with me fucking loving the new show from Louis C.K. Thank you. Solid review coming in for Good. you. Awesome. Yeah. I haven't seen it. I get home, and uh, I was away for a few days, and I just got a fucking envelope yeah. from here, which I didn't open. And then Steve had made me a copy. <laughs> well, uh, seriously? Yeah. Jesus, man. <laughs> Jesus, man. Uh, fucking hell. It's, it, it's the pilot in the first three episodes. Are, yeah. are you rerunning the pilot? Well, I don't think the pilot ran anywhere yet. No, the, the, they'll show the pilot. The first night, it's the pilot, and then the second episode, uh, the divorce episode. That one, that's right, number right, four right. in your thing. But there's two episodes that run the first night. Okay. And I saw Jimmy in it. Yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy was actually. fantastic. A lot of yeah. the people that do our radio show in it: Nick DiPaolo, Bob Kelly. Yes, Bob Kelly. Bob plays Kelly my did. He's your brother in there. Yeah, yeah. Was <laughs> I supposed to know that? Yeah, my, it's concerning to me that you didn't pick it up, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Holy he's shit! He's my brother in three episodes, and I don't know if he'll. You know, who knows? He did. He was only supposed to be in one, but he was good, so I brought him back. And maybe I went and got. I may not went have and next took year. a leak or something. It was a great scene. I didn't realize yeah. that he was your brother. Oh, yeah. Please fuck. humiliate like him somehow. Now. Oh no, like, that's why like he comes. He comes out next year and he has AIDS and he just can't stop blowing <laughs> fucking people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, dude, I don't know about this. <laughs> he gets pretty humiliated on this. Good, series. good, good. And 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 it's filmed. Uh, I I know you really appreciate how things are filmed because yeah. I've seen you with your cameras over the years. And, yes. uh, it's very obvious. You're very serious about how it looks. It yeah, no, we gritty. shot with a camera that's called a red, and it's like a film camera. Oh, like that thing's cool. It's like a okay. box, the red big fucking, red. Yeah, it's well, it's black, but it's uh, it's a monster, and you use uh, it takes real thirty five millimeter lenses. That's why you use them, like real looks cool. Oh, cool. movie lenses. Yeah, it has a little bit Damn. of a gritty look to it. No yeah. makeup. I was telling Louie, yeah. not many actors or actresses. A lot of just normal, funny guys. Yeah, for the and most I part. and I do use uh, actors, but there's no cast in the show. Like there's no set cast right. and like Bobby ended up sort of playing his way onto the team because he was in you know one scene and he did well so I put him in two more but nobody's <laughs> in more than two episodes or so because mm -hmm. uh, when you have a cast on a show you you it's like you're making all these bets that these six people will stay compelling for sure. 13 <laughs> episodes or whatever. And then a lot of them, you end up going, oh, fuck, what are we going to have this guy say? He stinks. That's and quite so a you unique just... idea to just kind of well, blow with nothing. off yeah. the cast thing. Yeah. That seems to be a staple of TV shows. Yes, it's to having have a cast. cast. I mean... But it's usually what sucks about them. And also, you can tell there's a strain to like make these two people talk, and they're not natural yeah. Yeah. Just to yeah. get them Talkers. in a scene. Just to have them be yeah. in it and just, okay, we have to develop this but, relationship. Why? If they're not in so I, so I started with nothing, and people come in, and they just kind of come and go. But Ann said it was strange, and that's why I like Louis' projects, because he goes against the yeah, norm. Yeah. You know, it's Definitely. not the polished fucking TV set and, and, and all the polished actors and actresses. Well, nobody likes that anymore anyway. Nobody likes right. watching that. Right. I mean, they're making reams of that shit, like beautifully perfected television. Yeah. With laugh tracks. And no yeah. one gives a fuck about it. Hard. You know, there's just, you know. You want to explain, Louie, in your, your own words? Because, uh, I mean, I loved it, but, you yeah. know, just get the main... Oh, what it's like, what it is. Yeah, it's, the main explanation of the of the series out it's there. It's kind of hard people. to describe because it's not... Uh, it doesn't a lot of none of uh, other shows don't have this format. It's like, it's a lot of times you see me on stage talking and then... Uh, There'll be a story that's a film. Like it's, I kind of think of them as short films. Sure, but they're all about my life. They're all really. It's like I, one way I describe it to somebody is it's uh, autobiographical fiction. Like it's me playing myself, but right. none of this, none of this shit really happened to me. <laughs> you know? Although so. we shot something that was based that's... on a conversation. It was like it was really amazing. Louis took this conversation that had happened and written this really fucking funny. Well written that scene. That was the poker like, scene, right? Yeah, I, that was I, a great scene. It was just so well done. I was like, God damn, that's what you do with normal life. Yeah, they were How playing, you make it into something sellable. Playing uh, poker. Well, uh, yeah, I guess I don't want to give away the scene, right, no, no, but Rick, a lot of funny guys just going back and forth, yeah. man. A lot of funny guys, just very natural conversation. That's why I asked Jimmy today. I'm like, was that all improv? Because it had that an improv feel to it. But that yeah, whole scene was written. written. Yeah, there's a few b bits that were improvised though. Like there was a basic thing of this conversation going on about a subject and, mm -hmm. and then everyone riffed and I used a little bit of something. Little, little, something. I thought Rick was very good. Rick Chrome yeah, who's uh really excellent. He's a sell he's a, the comedy sell all the time with the glasses 
And uh, he, he just really was good, man. Yeah, comedians have a certain thing that they do. Comedians work well under pressure. Like, that's what makes them. They're not good actors. Mm -hmm. They don't have good acting skill. Jimmy's, like, has, has one of the worst actors I've ever seen. <laughs> but, I am awful. But, uh, but, uh, oh, my God. I just that's my we one doing, scene appearance. <laughs> when we were doing that scene, I remember he ha tried to remember something, so he'd look up, like... Hmm. Like, it was, oh, like, no, so the, ham the, mm. Yeah, exactly. No, he's mm. great. Uh, Did but, he fold his arms? <laughs> <laughs> I even waved his, my finger. Scratched ah, his and, chin. And, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, uh, Jimmy's a good example of guys who, uh, it's not like they have this, like, well-bred acting skill, but if you put them under pressure, they'll give you a good performance. Sure. Like, actors, you have to really make them feel good. You have yeah. to say that you actually, when you criticize them, it has to sound like a compliment. <laughs> you have to go like, that was so great. Uh, I'd love to have a variation of that. And by the time you're telling them how to, the variation is, it's the opposite of what the shit what they is that did, they did. The Cause if you tell did. them like, I can't really use that. They just fucking fall. <laughs> Yeah, under pressure. Yeah. <laughs> but guys like Jim and Rick Chrome was just an old comedian guy. I told him during that thing he was fucking up and not getting some stuff right in front of everybody else. I said, "I really need you to do better than that. I'm not getting. <laughs> oh, I'm damn. not getting the information out of you. You got to step it up. This all comes from you." And I saw him go, "Oh fuck, okay." He's and he great. nailed it. He did nail it. Yeah. So that's what these guys are like. <laughs> yeah, and and it's fun for me because it's uh, it's Caroline's, it's the Comedy Cellar, it's it's that whole environment that you guys you know live and breathe in, you know. Yeah. And 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 your stand up, how it's filmed. I told you last time, it's mm. uncomfortable to watch, and I know you were going. Yeah, it's I know to be. you were going for that. Yeah. I have no doubt in my mind. Well, a lot of comedians that have uh, watched it with me have said, "Oh, this this is terrible. It looks like you're bombing, and it's too close. The camera's too close to you." And I realize that's because they are comedians. Yeah, right. and they want you to shoot the stand up in a very vain way with a beautiful floating <laughs> camera, like it's a special. Right. But it's not a special. The stand up is part of the story. The fact that I am a comedian and I talk about stuff on stage that happens to me is part of the story. So the, ca the camera's a bit too close and the angle's slightly uncomfortable. Yeah. And I go, I know Louis did that on purpose. Yeah. I have no doubt in my mind. Yeah, so I had awkward. no problem bringing it to bringing it to your attention. But uh, yeah, I, we all loved it, Lou. And it starts a uh, week from Tuesday yeah. in FX. No, and I learned, I mean, I, Jim's one of the guys I learned it from on Lucky Louie that if you have comedians, they're just sort of a murderer's row. It's like it's like the meat of your lineup. Right. Those are the guys that you can yeah. count on. Nick DiPaolo is great. Across. Nick is great. Nick's too. a very good actor. He's in yeah. one of the episodes. I don't know if I saw it's him. It's the one the... where he we got in a fight in the episode. Over Obama. And... and people thought that it was real and it was on YouTube for Oh, minute. that was, oh, yeah. okay. We talked about that, that, that episode. That's right. Okay. Yeah. That's right. They Remember they kind of yeah. blew the fucking bit. Yeah, yeah. Because some okay. asshole had to fucking put the. Yeah, there was an extra with an iPhone, and he I recorded okay. it. Okay, right, right. And he posted it online like it was a real prick. Right, but Nick was great. Yeah, yeah. we went Tell after me. him though. We heard we we fucked up his life. I think. <laughs> good, <laughs> good. How many episodes? Uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Mm -hmm. Second you season. Old, you'll never work. Second in this season. Town again? Who knows? I won't know until it's on the Who knows? Air. Okay. And Ricky Gervais. No, they didn't cancel it yet. It's not been on the right. air yet. Jesus. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, Ricky Gervais is in uh, one episode. A couple episodes. Yeah, he's on another one. Too. I saw one. He's he's a doctor, and holy yeah, shit, you funny. and him going back and forth. Fucking yeah. A. Some of the funniest yeah. stuff I've seen on TV in a long time. Yeah. Ricky Gervais fucking kills for no, really. He's really good. He's really good. Yeah. Damn. So, that's the show. You should have watched the f episodes. You would love them. I know. I got them sitting right in my house. They're all, again, Steve's copies. <laughs> it's wonderful. Steve whipped off a few copies. Yeah, he whipped yeah, off he's some copies. He's got to stop doing that. That's not okay. <laughs> no, I, I <laughs> wouldn't. I mean, there's still three, you know, a lot of this, a good about month you? before these are done airing. Yeah. How, how about Steve uh, comes down here? Because I think he's giving them out to pretty much everybody. I just don't. No, I just don't. I was funny because when, when I heard that you had the first four, I was like, huh. They sent him to those guys at Satellite, those fucking... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. uh, Not you guys, but yeah, I mean, you know. Just a regular Sam guy down the hall. Did they only send one have. copy like this? Is that... I'll destroy after I uh, oh. view it. I will, I will not... Right, it's safe I didn't know it was. It's safe in your house. Bit torrents. In your house, in your house. I don't know but, where my copy yeah. is right now, though. Oh, that right. is a God's honest oh, truth. Oh, right. oh, come on. I think I might have left it in Philly. I no, didn't know no. what it was. Uh, Steve, so what are Steve, you doing? How Louis many laws, not happy with you. How many FBI laws did you how break? How many of these fucking things did you run off? Uh, just enough for these hold on, hold on. We, what? Oh, sorry. Um, just enough for these three because we only got 
one copy of the um, uh, the previews. Or the uh, the first episode. So that I, I put asked. it up on UTorrent so that they could download it. But I told everyone, please leave it alone. <laughs> Are you implying that I would do something illegal? Because that's not true. Uh, of course. Um, you made one for Opiate and one for Jim and one for Ant. Yeah, because I asked uh, was the original Michael. ones. Did right you make? Oh, the see, original's right there. You asked yeah. Michael O'Brien for for uh, for two more. Because uh, oh, okay. we needed uh, enough for the three guys to watch. He said, I only had one, and that's, that's the one I gave you. So okay. what it's, do I do? Do I, you, you know, have a copy? No. You're a liar. I gave, no, I why don't. Would you, why would you lie? I don't. Why are you lying? You have the I'm first not. four episodes of Louie's new show, and you didn't, I don't. You I didn't double copy off for yourself. Not yet. I'm not, not yeah. saying you would take that copy and then make a, a no, hundred copies. I don't. I haven't seen it yet. I made them for you guys, and then I think I made one for Sam, too. I have well, a copy. This yeah. one's coming with Sam's me. Sam's got a copy, too. <laughs> this one's coming with Yeah, you better just take that. Who's a little that. paranoid? Jesus. Why wouldn't you just give that to somebody and then make two copies instead of three? And why, um, did, and why does Sam have a well, copy? Because Sam was supposed to do the one sheet, but he didn't do it. This is how this uh, happens. Yeah. It only starts Same. with a couple copies, and yeah. You know. Well, okay. Look, I, had, time, uh, I, I had the next time, a few copies for the people in Philly. <laughs> by the By the way, that's so, why you know. I don't believe in any conspiracy theory, because you can't give four people copies without it ending up going no. somewhere. Right. No. It's like no one could keep secrets. My one copy is at least ten now. It oh, multiplies. Really yes, oh, that's no. how it works. Better not be. You Steve. shouldn't do that. Best not be. All right. Okay. Liar. Louis's not happy with you. And you I, are lying. You got a copy for I this. don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't really don't. How got... hard is that to just say, no, I don't? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I would have watched it had I had one. Keep saying it. All right. There it oh, and here's the other. <laughs> oh, There's mine. Right Okay. Louis. Don't you love right. seeing it like this? <laughs> there it is. Louis is not happy, man. <laughs> Louis is Sharpie. Just First Sharpie. Four episodes. Oh, it's that's awesome. Written in Sharpie like a fucking bootleg piece of shit. You know how easy that is to take to Chinatown right now? Of course. Drop it on gold. a Canal Street <laughs> yeah, <look at> that. <laughs> blanket. There it is. There it is. Louis. Wonderful. Blame right. him. I thought of doing that I when thought... I was doing Pootie Tang and they were. They, Fired me off the movie. I thought <laughs> seriously about taking you? a beta tape to Canal Street. It was white. I'm just dropping it. Why did you get fired from? <laughs> you were directing it, right? Yeah, I wrote it and directed it. And they fired you during the movie? No, I was during the editing. Oh. I got to shoot the whole movie. But wow. During we were, editing? Yeah, well, that's when what all the fighting happens. <laughs> the editing is when things get bad. Yeah, yeah. That's when nobody likes the movie and they fight over how to, how to fix it. You have your idea or, of what you want. Did you just and shoot eggs out of your nose? Yeah, it's all over my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Who fired you? Um, the studio? I didn't officially get fired. I just, they, 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 they do it in a really fucked up way. They flew me out to L.A. because they moved the editing to L.A. And they flew me out there. And then I show up to give notes. Like I'm, and they go, get, what are you doing here? Like I go to the studio where they're editing. They go, what are you doing here? I'm, I'm here to give, you know, to edit. And they're like, no, go to your hotel. They put me up in a really nice hotel and flew me out first class. He said, just go to your hotel and we'll send you the reels as we cut them. Ugh. And I'm like, well, then I give you notes over the phone. No, because we have to lock the reels now. So we'll just. So I'm like, you just mean I'm going to be the first one to watch the movie. And You're pieces. out of, yeah, the whole loop yeah. as far and, as. And, and I was like, you can't. And he goes, fuck you. We flew you out here. We give you a first class ticket. <laughs> like, it was really. It was a really weird, creepy way to go about were it. Were they editing stuff, and you were just like, "Why the fuck did you?" Oh, I hate it. Cut yeah, it I like that. It. And, I hate it. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's a bad movie. It's. <laughs> it's a bad it movie. Is. I mean, I made a bad movie. I, don't, I honestly don't is, know. The That's, thing is, like crazy. having somebody edit your shit like that after you film it and and have a vision of what you wanted, and then just have pieces cut out of it. Well, and also like, they no, added I thought that was dumb kind of narration. Good. Like the movie was meant to be kind of awkward and strange. That's the way that I make stuff, and so they took everything that was sort of strange and they explained it with narration. Oh, that's always dumb. Good. Yeah, yeah, that's narration. Great. That's good. How did Chris yeah, feel? Dumb it down. Was he, that... Did Chris kind of think that you had made a mistake, or was he like? Yeah, he, nah. well, he was just trying to get the movie out, so he stayed with it and sure. kept them involved in it and stuff. But that was the end of my. Uh, you can't. You know, that's the way it goes. You sign a thing that says you sign it there. You work at their pleasure, you know. Right. You huh. can't come. Wow. I mean, nobody can be surprised. You work for a movie studio. It's not your own house. They didn't come to your house. <laughs> you know. And that leads me into this. So you got the new series, Louie. And yeah. I, I, I knew you were way involved, obviously, but creator, executive producer, yeah. writer, director, editor. Yeah. It's all you. It's yeah. all on you. Yeah, I do all of it. Yeah. Is that just fucking nerve-wracking? It is a lot of work, but uh, I love it. 
I didn't like having a writing staff when I had a writing staff and you got to explain to 10 people right mm. why you want to do something it turns into more work it turns yeah, into having yeah. you have to have consensus from 10 people to put something on television What's funny that ten people all agree is funny? You know what I mean? Like, right. How do you story get rape? Like ten fucking? <laughs> <laughs> how do you get a, a network to agree to? Hi, I'll be doing everything. Um, like that really isn't the the norm there, and and no. and networks don't like going too far out of the the box. No. Well, so how do you, how do you do? They even up? know what you're doing. Jedi no, they have mind no idea. Shit. They don't. They don't have an idea what you're doing. Even no, they don't know how, what the shows are about or anything. <laughs> what are they doing? Until they see it. <laughs> That's hysterical. They don't know until they, they do it. A lot of confidence in you. Well, it, it's. Uh, I went there with a lot of leverage. You know, I don't usually go to Hollywood with leverage. I usually go there when I really need money. Right, fucking right. Nude, nude pictures. Yeah. What did you have, Jesus? <laughs> well. I went there and I had like uh, of the networks offering me a lot of money to do a pilot, and um, I I think NBC and Fox were both bidding on shit, and I had just done a lot of bunch of stuff that really worked. So mm. uh, then I got uh, this call to go to FX, and this guy John Langreff that runs it, the president, he uh, he said, uh, you know, if you do a show here, we can't really pay you a lot, but you can have a lot of fun. And I kind of heard that before, you know. But uh, he was offering me $200,000 as the budget for the whole pilot. And I was like, okay, so what do I get paid? And he's like, no, that's... That's the whole thing. That's the whole yeah. thing. Wow. $200,000 is very low to r r do a whole... Episode. What would a network give you for a pilot? Uh, well, the, the networks were offering me, like, I think I was being offered like 250000 bucks just to write, just as a fee to write the pilot. If we had made the pilot, it would have been like about a million it. bucks. It's about a million dollars to do yeah. a pilot. Wow, and I would have been paid two fifty plus as an actor, I would have been paid more. I would have made a lot of money, and that's what I was after. Yeah, and this guy's telling me you have to run the whole show on two hundred thousand. <clears> that's <throat> weird because that is kind of like here they tell us, uh, you know, you're not going to make a lot of money, and you're yeah. going to have a real shitty time every day, <laughs> right. and you won't have any control right. over what you do. So it's exactly like yeah. that. You like won't make really... a lot of money, but you'll feel like you make even less. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, fucking place. <laughs> wow. So you. So he said you're only two hundred thousand bucks, and and I he, I said, well, what. Are, like I guess I could do a sketch show for that, and he said, uh, "No, I want it to be like your show about your life, like what I was pitching to the networks." Mm -hmm. And I just said, "No." I said, "Why would I? Do? That's dumb." <laughs> yeah, what do you, what do you <laughs> why would I do that? And then he called me at my house, this guy, and he said, um, "You redheaded cunt!" And he hung up on you. <laughs> <laughs> That's, right. <laughs> That's right. And he said, uh, "He said I get it. You were working. You want to go to NBC? I totally get. It. You want to be the next Charlie Sheen? That's what he said. That's oh, where you're headed an, for. That's an insult. You're going to be the next Charlie that's, Sheen. Uh, but he's exactly right. That's what I was trying. Like signing a development deal to do a sitcom at NBC. Right. I would have had a shit show if I and I wouldn't have made it on the air. Not yeah, in a million well, years. No, of course not. But uh, he said, uh, I said, look, the only way I'm interested in doing this is if you give me the two hundred thousand dollars. Like wire it to my, to me." in new york and i'll give you a show but a i'm not pitching deal. it i'm not going through like a whole pitching with you and writing a script and sending it to i don't want to do all that well wow, so you just, really did have them kind of like hey send me money that's all i have i'm gonna make a show you're gonna fucking put it on i well it's only two hundred thousand dollars it <laughs> yeah. was such a low bet for him yep and he was like yeah i can that's a check i can write today i don't care i mean how what are the I, it might have stunk but then he would just go, all right, he didn't work. So what? It was a low uh, low ball bet for him. And if it works out, you can probably Yeah, so he did. He sent me $200,000, literally mm. wired it to me before I had a show idea. Wow. And I just thought, okay, I've got money, and I know people who do TV and movies here. So I just started hiring people. And, Jesus, that like, sounds I, exhausting. <clears throat> I did it all backwards. I went like, well, I'd like to shoot in a... Uh, I'd like to use that pizza place. What do we? Do? What happens there? Like I, you know. <laughs> what happens? There? Yeah, you know. And I started writing it in pieces, and I did it, and they loved it. Mm -hmm. So he said, "Let's do twelve more." And I said, "But well, I want to do it the same way." And he said, "Well, let's you and me sit down and talk about it." And so what it came down to is, I had a beer with him, and I told him like three or four story ideas, mm -hmm. and he said, "Yeah, all right." And they gave me three hundred thousand per episode for the rest. It's not a lot of money, but. Uh, the it it's money that he was able to give me without asking 
any of his bosses. Yeah, without people having to account <clears throat> for things. Yeah, because if, <laughs> yeah. if he asked for more, then we'd have to go to the advertisers and explain to them why this show yeah. will well, be a hit. Yeah, You'd yeah. be on the radar. You know what yeah, I mean? but this is this show gets paid for by like fucking uh, gold coin commercials and stuff like that. Like <laughs> yeah. people that don't even know what they're advertising on. They just buy time. You need to buy gold <laughs> right <laughs> now. Gold is, that's... is up. At, yeah, okay, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's paying for this show, so they don't lose. They can't lose money on my show because yeah. it's so cheap. And, yeah, yeah. And the jumping off point is if if it becomes a big success, then mm. I'll end up making that's more great. money than yeah, well, yeah. I would have. I should jump in. It doesn't look cheap. Yeah. Gamble. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. I'm it, amazed that's... how little it, it it costs to make. Well, that's it looks great. That's what because I've been making like independent films and stuff in New York for years, and I know how to make money mean something. There's so much waste in television, and actually, a huge. I I really think about eighty percent of what it costs to do a TV show mm -hmm. is putting it through the network system and giving them their approvals. That's. I mean, you remember Jim? We used to do a network a table read. And a network run through and a studio run through. Notes, yeah. Notes, wow. and notes, and yeah. those those run throughs are expensive, like where you have to stage the entire show. And the only reason you're doing it is to show it to them, so they can give you notes and make you stay late and rewrite it. And that was <laughs> HBO, which was a great network, but they still they made us do wow all this fucking shit, and it cost a fortune, and it cost all the time we had. But on this show, I write something on the toilet. And I call Blair, my executive producer, line producer, and I say, uh, get me this. an airport. Let's shoot it. And then we go shoot it. <laughs> Fuck. That's it. And we cast it. And oh, It's got to be... It's got to be a good feeling. No, it is, and it's a lot of pressure. It's around. smart of them because I'm so scared for the show to stink. Right. For them to watch it and go, this was a huge mistake. Right. And so I obsess about it. I work much harder than I did on mm -hmm. uh, other shows. And they, they, when they, I'm so excited for them to get a show because they don't even know what it's about. And if I get a guest star in it, like when I got Ricky, I didn't, they didn't know I got Ricky. They are just watching. They're like, fuck, Ricky Gervais is in this? Like, how did he, how did he get, how did he get him? Somebody was jerking off in an office when they heard that. Oh, yeah. yeah. How Who much did you Ricky? give him? You got Ricky oh, Gervais? Dude. I had no idea. You got your face and we gave him $200,000, right. this fucking guy? Yeah. Yeah, so. He, he, fuck, he, he kills it. So that's the trick. Right and on, if the man. show starts to stink, they'll come calling and start telling me what to do. But for now, mm. oh, they don't care. Good. Can we uh, put in a little blonde kid named Oliver? With the death knell. <laughs> so, Louis, because uh, I guess I'm obsessed by you, what's going on with you and Twitter, man? People... Oh, yeah, I guess I, I get drunk in Twitter sometimes. Is it real that you're getting drunk in <laughs> It's tweeting? happened twice that I've been on airplanes and drank. This last time I didn't uh -huh. eat. Like, I, I worked all day, and yeah. I didn't eat. Like, I worked too much. I forgot to eat, you know? Right. And then I get on a plane, and I get a rum and coke. And we had to sit on the tarmac for a while, so they started giving us more drinks. Yeah. And I got <laughs> fucking bombed really fast. There's something about rum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I Twittered. I was doing a show at the Improv, so I Twittered to say, hey, I'm doing a show at the Improv, and fuck you, motherfuckers. Like, that's just the way I said it. And I started going, eh, fuck this, and I started saying this shit. About Sarah Palin. Yeah, it came out, and it wasn't like, I'm going to shit on Sarah Palin. It's just that I said... I think I said something like, uh, I'm drunk enough to shit in Sarah Palin's mouth. Right. <laughs> and I That's picked her because why you. not? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then I got her in, clanging around in my head <laughs> and started saying everybody should spray diarrhea in her face or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what I said. <laughs> but I just got, I got into it. Yeah, there's a whole network of people like, Louis C.K.'s drunk tweeting again. And we all fucking jump on and check it out. And then... Uh, I think the first time you did it, the next day you had uh, doubts or something because you you wiped out. The I whole... took it all down. Yeah, yeah, you were like, oh fuck. <laughs> well, I, gotta I get took rid it of all, all down these. because it wasn't my best work, really. I wasn't <laughs> worried. Oh, okay. I'm not gonna run against Sarah Palin. In, <laughs> yeah, in the primaries, I just uh, I just looked at it. And I'm like, come on, is this really what you? And the thing is, that stuff you put on the internet and then it just stays up there. I don't think you have to just leave it up there. I, you know. It could, like, it could have its moment, and, and then, then you take, could it down. take it down. Well, like but they do the down. Twitter's tweets stay oh, up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, right. they're, they're there forever right. somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Other people. The Library of Congress it, apparently. The Library of Congress is now taking them, and because this is real important stuff. Ninety-nine point yeah, nine percent of it is doing this. so uh, important. I'm sure it's some way to but, tax us. Yeah. <laughs> some, somehow <laughs> exactly. there'll be a Twitter tax. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> we got Louis C.K. in studio, and we got James in Westchester on the phone. James. Hey. What's up, James? 
Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, a few days ago, me and my friends were having some drinks, and uh, you showed me two Louis C.K. YouTube videos, and I'm instantly a fan, and I'm so excited for the show. Well, which oh, two were you. they? Uh, the first one was a horse gag. Tub <laughs> <laughs> <Tough> girl. That's <laughs> right. That wasn't and Louis, Louis in that video. Somebody in Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the first one was a, a YouTube bit where you're talking about only white people should time travel. Oh, yeah. Well, it's not exactly what I said, but... <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> it, it wasn't time travel. It was vote. <laughs> uh, and the second uh, one, I think, was a, was a promo for your new show where, you, where you're thinking about uh, making a, a porno. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Bobby Cannavale thing, that's right. Yeah, that was very, very... Uh, I just want to say, like, because of those two, those two videos, I'm now so excited for your show. I'm, like, an a instant fan. Thank you. There you go. So you'll be checking out Louie's new show on FX next Tuesday night at 11 o'clock. Absolutely. All right, Everyone okay. else should. Yeah, I think they should. I, I really enjoy it. I think our audience especially is going to love the show. So. Yeah, I think they like. I mean, I get to still be very crude, crude on the show. And it's, oh, yeah. You're, it's not, you're being you. Yeah. You know? I've been amazed by what they let us keep on the air. But there's some nudity, all that's going to stay in there? Yeah, and I mean, on the the Ricky episode, at one point he says, your cock looks like a dog was chewing, that was sucking it off. Yeah. And then he started chewing on it because he thought it was a blood and cum filled shoe. Yeah. <laughs> that was the first thing we said that it went to standards and I was biting my nails and they and the email that came back was standards has no requests. Wow. wow. <laughs> what's it? I was like, are you serious? You're in the right place, Lo. Yeah. Yeah, you're in the right place. Most definitely. Because I mean, just because uh, I got these episodes, I'm thinking, okay, some of this they're gonna have to maybe clean up slightly. No, that's and, as they're gonna and air. That's how it's gonna air. Right yep. the fuck on. Yeah. All right, why don't we take a break? We got Louis C.K. in studio. We'll talk about some other things. Uh, Louis' new show is gonna be on FX next Tuesday after Rescue Me at 11 o'clock. Make sure you check it out. All right. That's it. Very yes. Right. The Obi and Anthony Show on the Virus Serious XM. We're hanging with Louis C.K. today. Once again, his new show, Louis, on FX next Tuesday is the big premiere at 11 o'clock right after Rescue Me. And uh, I've, I've seen the first four episodes. I want to say it again. I'm fucking loving this new series from uh, Louis. Thank you. And uh, we were discussing during the break, Bill Donahue is up your ass again, huh? <laughs> yeah. Our old pal. Yes. The guy that got us fired. Made our lives miserable for about two years, three months. That's not about. I, I know exactly. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then he, he welcomes us back to radio with open arms with a nice little press release, which actually helped us at the time because everyone yeah. was really nervous. And now he just kind of calls our show. Right. I haven't forgotten. No. No. You shouldn't. No. I, I still kind of like, uh, you know, <laughs> fuck you. But, uh. Yeah, he, uh, I did the Daily Show and I said that the Pope fucks kids and uh, <laughs> he got mad. That'll get him mad. Yeah, that'll well, get him wound tell, up. Tell his boss to quit fucking kids. And, <laughs> and don't look at me. Now, what do you mean by he? <laughs> don't he play got, on the weather, man. What do you mean he got mad? Was he all over TV? Like uh, no, he uh, doesn't get that much attention usually. I don't oh, think. he doesn't do TV I mean, anymore. He, doesn't, he made a press release on his website that I that I should not ought have said that the Pope fucks children in the <laughs> asshole. What drives me nuts about Bill Donahue? He'll have a problem with a movie, a TV show, mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, uh, whatever. And then we, I'll, I'll ask him flat out, well, did you see the movie? Yeah. No, I did not. I'm like, no, that's what, when last time I was on that he was on, you know, we, he and I debated on your show. That's a great yep. YouTube clip. People yeah. love that one. And he, and he said, uh, I, I asked him about why he said something about Lucky Louie, that it was anti-Catholic. And he said, uh, what, what are you talking about? And I explained it to him. He hadn't seen the show. Mm -hmm. He wrote the press right. release, but he hadn't seen it. Yeah, right. he, see, he admitted he never saw the no, show. And the amazing defense that he had was, wow, do you really think that people like me, heads of groups like mine, actually watch the things that we complain about? Like, right. he actually <laughs> expected people to go, like, oh, well, we don't expect you that to. That sounds yeah. horrible to people listening in. No, it's a t I mean, he's telling Catholics, like my grandmother... Like that, they shouldn't. That they're they should be offended by something, and he hasn't fucking seen Never even it. Saw. How do you know it's offensive? No, it's it's, exactly. it's about as uh, as phony and and a fucked up a thing for a guy like him yeah. to do. He mm -hmm. went after religious, religious. I think that's how yeah. the Is Bill Maher movie Bill was Mars called, movie, right? Yeah. And uh, fair enough. If you know, obviously he would have a problem with a movie yeah. something like that. But I yeah. asked him, did you at least see the movie? Because he was all over TV yelling and screaming about it. He goes, No, I, I didn't. Have, I didn't see it, but my staff did. Yeah, that's, that's he's, you should be seeing the stuff that you're on good. TV complaining His about. Yeah. So what happened? He just uh, sent out a press release. Yeah, that I shouldn't have, shouldn't have said what I said and 
uh, he wants some kind of boycott, but it fell. I don't know what he did. Some other group wanted to boycott Comedy Central, which mm. who cares? But anything with boy in it. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> those, those wacky. <laughs> Ah, uh, God, he's yeah. he's not quite the. Um... I didn't just say that Pope the Pope fucks boys either. I mean, I made a case that he lets other people fuck kids. Yeah, right. and that yeah. I think you either are disgusted and horrified by fucking kids, or you can't stop doing it. Was that you that said something like, if they found out this was going on at Kmart or, you know, some other organization, yeah. like like it, if you found out Kmart employees. Yeah. We're just fucking children. There would be a giant investigation well, on they Kmart. Would, they and... would go go down. Yeah. No, yeah, the Catholic yeah. Church would should at least lose their license at some point. <laughs> at least lose their, their... God license. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or you, you're opening a school whenever you want to license. Yeah. For yeah, the, yeah. the whole paying no taxes for prime real estate in every city in the world <laughs> thing. Yeah. They could at least get that taken down a couple of notches. There you do know. seem to be a lot of young boys involved with church that you go to church for anything mm -hmm. and there's you know young boys holding the candles and doing things it's like is that is that really yeah. necessary <laughs> and with all the shenanigans that have gone on it just can we creepy. maybe err on the side of safety and yeah. Yeah. maybe put some you know just a few non-catholic chaperones yeah, ugly jewish children <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no it's uh it's they're they're it's bad but yeah. At least, it's, at it's, least you uh, should be able to make fun of them. Like that's my feeling right. about it. Is that yeah. like, well, how dare you say that? Well, because there's a major boy fucking problem in your organization, and at least yeah. you're gonna take some shit for it. Yeah. Like no one can even say anything. No, you can't say a word. All religions though are so fucking like, oh, you can't say that. It's my religion. Well, sure I can. It's, like, who gives it's not shit? mine. Yeah, that's not blasphemy. <laughs> not to me. I'm not Catholic. Ain't my God. And by the way, it's not against their God. It's the fucking pope who's a human yeah. being chosen by other men to be pope it's yeah. just an election like said, fucking uh, like chuck schumer <laughs> like who gives a shit it's had nothing to do with god fucking, no it's not this guy's name is ratzinger <laughs> he's some dude named al ratzinger or whatever his name is <laughs> i mean he's just a guy so when people say like oh you're going against god now nah, who the fuck this guy's not God. No. He's a fucking tre guy dressed in gold, in a gold shirt, literally, like, made of gold. <laughs> like, yeah, they they really don't want anyone saying anything bad about anyone <clears throat> uh, in their religion. Or you are, yeah, saying something bad about God. No, the other thing that proxy. I get from people about this sort of stuff that kills me is when they go, uh, well, now say something about Muslims. Now say, so you coward. All right. Well, I didn't think of a Muslim joke. Like, why do I have to make a joke up? But do I have to make a joke about Mormons? Do I have to make any time I think about something about one group? Is it just, yeah. oh, shit, now i got to think of 15. Yeah, just Otherwise, to make I'm a coward even. just yeah. to make you happy, you fucking disgruntled somebody in their well, underwear. When it, when it comes <laughs> up to have, you know, if I, if I want to make a joke about uh, people sawing other people's heads off and blowing up their feet to take a plane down... Then I'll go with the Muslim yeah, thing. Yeah, that's when I when I come yeah. up with a funny joke about what dummies that's, they are. Yeah, what idiots they are. Yeah, and, you know, the Jewish jokes uh, they write themselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and by funny. the way, the thing with the Muslims is that they're they're there's not much to make fun of because they're what they do. They're nailing it. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> really just <laughs> killing just people let in them airplanes. Roll. Yeah, exactly. let them roll. Hey, boy, they stink at being terrorists. Yeah. No, they're awesome at it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, uh, what was up with the Father's Day clip? You made that for somebody? Oh, it's, it's, everyone it's, sent it to me yesterday, but I was uh, traveling. I was down in Philly for the day, and just CBS called me and asked me. But people said I it was really funny. The morning, uh, CBS this morning, and just do a thing about fatherhood. Oh, you so, did CBS this morning? Yeah, so I just went in and did it. Good. Yeah, I guess I didn't meet any of those people. Look here, across the street. This the is video. the commercial, the uh, Flomax yeah. commercial. Yeah, Fucking the commercial. <laughs> Now I gotta check this out because people said it was uh, it was well done. This could really be the wild west on the, uh, on the internet now. Internet. People put commercials on stolen clips now. <laughs> yeah, you know, like right. clips from my special that have been like people have just pirated. I don't care because it just gets yeah. me out there more. But they have commercials on them. I had like to, some um, guy takes a fucking HBO special and puts it on his own YouTube, and they and there's a you have to watch a commercial yeah. first. I, I had to, uh, I was do, doing my, um, my 
video podcast thing on live stream. Yeah. And then I go on and, and realize every five minutes they were stopping the show and popping in a full screen commercial. Yeah. And yeah. it wasn't the same time for everybody watching. It depended on what time you logged in. So it wasn't even like I could go, all right, here's another five minutes. I'll just say, all right, I'll be back in 20 seconds when this commercial's done. It would just suddenly go suddenly, to the it, The whole screen goes out, and I come back saying, you know, 20 seconds later, whatever I'm talking about. It's like, how the fuck and they're making do you money expect on your people thing. to do that? I pulled right off of it. Yeah, I went good. to Ustream now because it's like, why, why am I going to just, just sit no. there and... and you know, I don't mind the little pop-up strip on the bottom. You got to deal with that at times and shit like that. But uh, that's like, who thought of that lame-ass idea? And who's going to sit there and keep doing a show when they just cut your show off every five minutes? No, it's uh, ridiculous. And they're making money on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're making money. And your on personal. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. No. Well, here's Louis C.K. on Father's Day, which obviously was yesterday. Oh. No. A few days ago, I was leaving a restaurant with my youngest daughter. And I was holding her hand, and I was texting with this hand. Yeah, I'm that guy. A woman walked by, and she gave me a dirty look like, mm, you should pay more attention to your kid. Okay, guilty. But I have something to say to that woman. This is why I'm able to spend time with my kids when I should be at work. It was noon on a Thursday, okay? I had a crazy amount of work to do. But my kid graduated from preschool that day, and I wanted to take her to lunch. It was a great lunch. We sat at the same side of the table the way the she likes to share a chicken yeah. cutlet. I ate some of her chicken cutlet. We looked at her drawings. She told me many stories about the chinchilla in the classroom. And so now I'm texting and you walk by, eh, bad father. What do you know? <laughs> okay, I'm being defensive. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have been texting. You know, when my kids were younger, I used to avoid them. I used to sit on the toilet till my legs fell asleep. <laughs> you want to know why your father spends so long in the toilet? Because he's not sure he wants to be a father. I felt like being a dad was taking away everything I wanted to be. And I was right. But so what? What's so great about our lives? What the hell is an adult without kids? What's the point? So I got off the toilet. I flushed down my personal dreams. And I decided, <laughs> I'm going to be a dad. I'm not going to be mom's assistant. That's depressing. Don't do that if you're a dad. Just wait for her to write you a list. Walk around the store staring at it and call her from the cereal aisle to make sure she, you got it right. Thing. <laughs> Be a man. Make your own list. Do you need any avocados? Fathers have skills that they never use at home. You run a landscaping business and you can't dress and feed a four-year-old? <laughs> Take it on. Spend time with your kids and have your own ideas about what they need. Get into it. It won't take away your manhood. It'll give it to you. I did that. I spent more time with my kids. I took it on. I found out that I'm a pretty bad father. <laughs> I make a lot of mistakes. I don't know what I'm doing. But my kids love me. Go figure. Yeah, right on, Louie. <laughs> That's, That's a great good, spot, man. too. Fucking Sunday morning. I, was not, I, I saw uh, on the CBS website where they have that posted, This uh, the comments. Yeah. Uh-huh. This woman wrote a really just angry, angry. Why? Why a, a bunch she... of people got mad. A bunch yeah, of people got I offended. Could see, I could see that audience kind of not yes. getting. You. Everybody gets offended now about everything. And there's one th one line in there that touched off a few people. It got really offended because you just can't say anything negative anymore. Can you think of what line in there? I, I'm, I'm would trying to people? think now because something did hit me when you said it, and I'm thinking. I'm trying mm -hmm. to figure. It's just me saying, uh, uh, what's what's a gr what's the grown up without kids? What's the point? Right, right. What's the point? And uh, well, I happen to not have children, and it's because I couldn't. And I how dare you? Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. Just like All this right. woman wrote a long thing saying, "Excuse me, but I was married to a man who had a vasectomy and lied and didn't tell me about it." And it turns out that before he did, he had an ch illegitimate child, and then he left me for that woman. So, he, so that comedian owes me a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's my fucking problem. Yeah, exactly. She Sorry. could still adopt, <laughs> oh, right? Exactly. If she really wants Sorry to. Be yeah, your... exactly. Fuck you. Yeah. What's wrong Just because it didn't come out of your smelly cunt. Your dumpster <laughs> yeah. womb. Just a lot of people get... adopt you, miserable old lady. That cobweb it... haunted mansion womb of yours. <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't want to have the kids, so he no, was and he no. wasn't offended by that line, no, right? No, I. Uh, it just has no I desire. I just think I'm uh, I'm I'm too uh, selfish with my time and yeah, stuff like that. it's a choice that. you make. I'm, I'm, and I'm who cares? Terrible. That's the point of view at the moment that I said it. Yeah. It's like people think okay. that everything you say has to be very well measured and has to represent everybody's point of view. Yeah. And like, how dare you state? 
that a child, uh, man, a childless person is worthless. I just fucking said it I, at the, in the moment. Who gives a shit? And by the way, yeah, that's like it's, you. That's the, you. Right. Yeah, that's what I thought at the, at the time, at the moment. And who cares? It's like, well, yeah. And everyone knows Louis is a great father. Uh, too bad I can't do a Charles Osgood. Jordan obviously watches Sunday morning. I would love to hear Charles Osgood say, up next, comedian Louis C.K. talks about Father's Day and calls his daughter a cunt. Oh, God. <laughs> and later, death of the American theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, hate yeah. Their, I hate those creepy son pictures don't like they put yeah. on. Uh, like the, the old son with the face and shit. It's like nightmarish. I watch Sunday morning. I get the heebie-jeebies very, from things like it's that. It's an easy watch in the morning yeah. on Sundays. No stress. Nah. Someone with that collects of teapots. Yeah, and they're going a, through a house. Yeah, yeah, the story before teapots. me was Bill Gates and his father and how they're such good pals. Oh, yeah, really? Fantastic. <laughs> easy to watch. Yeah, it must be easy to be uh, pals they're with smiling. a fucking they're all smiling. billionaire. Yeah, exactly. yeah, the father's like, you know, hey, my son, he's not a complete fuck-up. He's made billions of dollars. Trillions. I'm sure they get along great. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. I don't know why rich people ever fight. Why would you fight? <laughs> why would you fight? Isn't yeah. like money the thing that everyone fights over? <laughs> yeah, it makes all the difference. If you're rich, it's you like just money go, doesn't uh, buy happiness. Yeah, but it sure pays for a lot of badness. Now, I just always imagine <laughs> the rich people fight in families fighting. It's like fuck you. Oh well, let's go buy a you know castle and <laughs> yeah, will fix it up. Eat some gold, <laughs> 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 and then everybody's okay again. <laughs> how uh, how was Father's Day, Lou? Your daughters doing anything special for you? They're no. not. They're not really at that age yet. No. Well, they? they're eight and five. They should be at they that age. They should be doing something for yeah, you. Yeah, nothing. Where it makes you a no, little warm fucked. inside. Nothing. I got fucked. Nothing. Oh, I had. Man, uh, I, was mad. I had I was my mad. first. My first Father's Day I know. yesterday. That's great, man. And I didn't realize it turns into like a second birthday for you. Yeah, it's great. It's awesome. I was getting cards from <laughs> a all. Second birthday. It is though. I was getting. I was getting lottery tickets. I was getting yep. cash. I got gifts. I got cards yeah. from all from people. I'm Damn. like, why are you giving me a Father's Day it's card? Great. Uh, that's so, but you know, people nice. came out of the woodwork. Like, yeah, I don't know why people members. give. I don't know why people and outside of your family do it. I don't know why. It was everyone that was mm. a father. I'm, I mean, I told my kids when I was yelling at them for forgetting it. That <laughs> fathers and Mother's Day is because we take care of them. You know, right. so it's that's why we get a little more than just our birthday. Yeah, it's because we take care of them. Mm. But I, and and I think your your wife should give you something for she Father's did. Day. Great, because you know you're appreciating each other. Sure, your but, roles in the household, but other people outside the house. Why? Why are they? But then her shit? grandparents gave me something. Wow. My wife's mom gave me. Well, something. That's your first the one. First you won't one. get one next year. Probably next year not. I think it, they want to make it a little special, which was awesome. Next and, year, nothing. And life's weird because the last five Father's Day days were mm. like the worst day of the year for me. Cause, yeah, because you know, your dad, my yeah. pop's gone. So yeah. it went from like, ugh, I just want to like let this. Well, day... it's an interesting thing about how life, uh, the, the cycle of life, yes, sir. I, f and I then got all of a sudden it's a cold day again. Yep. That's fucked up. I got in right mm. under the wire, too, because him being a new dad, I was like, fuck, like 8.30 at night. I'm like, hey, happy Father's Day, Opie. Ah, <laughs> it was, hope it was good. It was definitely. Uh, I was it, like, whoosh, whoosh, under the wire. <laughs> yeah, no, I was mad at my kids one. for forgetting, I, and then I thought, oh, I, should I call my dad? And I thought, yeah. fuck that. I'm not calling him. <laughs> <Fuck> <laughs> I didn't that. call him. I, I was just surprised you thought of me outside the show. I was like, wow, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> well, because I was thinking it's like Father's Day, because then everybody was pretty much leaving the house, yeah. and it gave me time to think for a second. I'm like, oh, yeah, new fathers. There's a few of them. I, like stupid Travis, I, I, I you know, well, I, with, with his, his beard and his kid, trying to hide that he's gay. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? You yeah. really went the distance, didn't you? Had a kid and everything. Yeah, I'm all in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had to, uh, uh, I, I, nah, never mind. Well, what? now I have to. Now you yes. have to. I, uh, I had to leave my kid for the first time yesterday. I'm fucking, mm -hmm. all of a sudden I got teary-eyed. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll admit it. I got teary-eyed. And, and ah, like, you faggot. I know. In front of a house full of people down in Philly. Tough, mm -hmm. tough, there's some tough people oh, in that house. Stay, you mean you're going to be away from the kid for a for while? For a couple days because, yeah. you know, she's visiting yeah. family down there. I have to Philly, did they back. throw beer on you and <laughs> fucking batteries? <laughs> right. Throwing batteries as I'm Savages. trying to leave the house. <laughs> Philly like, oh, And I go, oh, this is what this is about. Like, it finally hit me. Like, oh, fuck, okay. Yeah, I know, because you've been with this person their whole life, so. <laughs> Six weeks. Yeah. yeah. It's their whole life. I'm at the point because yeah. it's only six weeks. I'm convinced we're just babysitting. Yeah. I'm waiting for the parents to show up and like, oh, okay, that was nice no, that's that I was babysitting that's... for six weeks. 
Yeah, yeah that's I'm, what that's I'm like. only starting to realize, wait a minute, this is... No, so I remember when uh, my ex-wife gave birth. She wasn't my ex-wife then. She was still my wife. But, yeah. <laughs> we were divorced before the baby was born. <laughs> right. Uh, all that, that happens. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I knew a guy, a writer. I uh, worked on the Cedric the Entertainer show, and this writer, uh, James, he was... Uh, he had three kids, and he said, oh, when my wife gets pregnant, I just leave the house. I just leave for a while till the baby's born, then I come back. <laughs> Holy like, shit. Really? And I was like, seriously? What the hell is that? He goes, because I was talking about how I was struggling in my marriage with you know the new baby and all that stuff. And he goes, oh, yeah, well, when my wife gets pregnant, I just leave because she gets really you know hard to deal with. So I just leave and then come back when the baby's uh, already even born. Wow. And I'm like, how the fuck do you, because I'm how like you trying all these, how did you get away with that? Yeah. He's like, well, what's she going to do? She doesn't want to raise the kids by herself. <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing. Wow. Uh, what, to what, totally I, use your leverage to leave. Yeah. And if yeah. She's probably throwing shit at him. Oh, just yeah. Just furious. Yeah. He didn't divorce her. He just leave. He'd go get an apartment somewhere, to, you know, stay with friends. And then he comes back. What, and she's like, I can't believe you left. And he's like, all right, well, you want me to just, you want to divorce me or what? No, but you shouldn't have done that. Yeah, ooh, whatever. Wow. <laughs> like, there's some people that run their relationship that way. Uh, when, when I was, when I was married. Genius. It, is, it works. It, it was smart on his part. Yep. When I was married, my wife uh, at one point uh, really wanted children, and yeah. I really did not yeah but uh you faked it that you again, wanted children though yeah i, I remember well, I, those days I, I was like yeah all right I, no i was going along with it like i did with everything else in my life uh, back then i just went all though i was don't make waves anthony status quo let's just you know never fucking actually bring up your opinion of how you feel about something Ugh. I just want to smack myself. Yeah. Yeah, it's just terrible. Time machine, man. We're so, going back and I know. smacking I want to go back self. and just punch myself in the face. Well, you get in these relationships where you just feel uh, like forced into certain You're on behavior. a track. Yeah, the you just can't change. The second you get change. engaged, you're on a track that just you have no more control mm -hmm. over it. So she wanted to have kids. Um and it was time to like now she said no we're, we're doing this now. I'm I'm taking prenatal vitamins and I'm doing this and that. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. I have to fake coming. Oh my I would God. fuck her. Oh my God. And I would make all the sounds, the faces, the moves, oh my and, God. and make believe I came, really fucking shoved it in. And then I'd lay there a while. I wouldn't just pull right so out. That you could so think it got absorbed? Say, yeah, it absorbed up. <laughs> fucking went wherever it goes. Oh my God. And I would sit there and, uh, oh my God. yeah, and, and, and then just be like, go in the bathroom. Oh jerk my off, God. put little fucking Anthony Jr. down the toilet bowl. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. She never, because I didn't want to have kids. But she didn't realize when she didn't feel all squishy? Nah, sometimes they're not squishy. If you if you come real deep She's and you dumb. fucking stay there a while. She's pretty stupid. And she was stupid, uh, thank you, you know, yeah. with that thank whole you. thing. I know you're contractually you guys... not allowed to say it, but yeah, she was a dumb cunt. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> didn't you guys... I, uh... I'm, not, I'm not in your divorce <laughs> agreement. <laughs> Fuck her. Stupid whore. Oh fucking manipulative God. cunt. Oh, <laughs> Trying to have, make a man have a baby when you didn't want it's one. about time. <laughs> fucking Am I, uh, stupid. Didn't you? Oh, we went to the uh, the yeah. fertility specialist. They, they went to the fertility ah. specialist because they thought something was wrong. And the specialist said, well, your husband has to actually ejaculate. Inside the, you. We're oh finding my God. the problem is. Oh, he put my there's fucking no, shit. There hasn't been a sperm in your body since 1975. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he put my shit under a slide. It looked like fucking nuclear reaction. The shit was flying all over the place. Oh, my God. Swimming like crazy. Looked like L.A. after the Lakers won the championship. Perfect. Oh. <laughs> yeah, perfectly shaped little sperm heads that could just puncture an egg. It was great. And then it's like, I don't know what the problem is. Wow. And there I am, fucking sexually frustrated. How many frustrated. times did you fuck her that way, it, do you it think? Was, it was every time she felt she was ovulating. Oh, my God. And, uh, Were you guys having yeah. a lot of sex back then? No. I wasn't it, was, it was strictly for yeah. her getting pregnant, so wow. I would just not. I don't know. Not come. That's awful. And mm. then I'd piss her off sometimes and be fucking, and then I'd pull out and come on her stomach. Jesus. And she'd be like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Look at all that. Yeah, we're supposed to do. Ah, oh, uh, what a waste. I forgot. That's cool. I forgot you were trying to get pregnant. Oh. Uh, forgot. It slipped out. Wow, that's, yeah. That's twisted, though, Ant. Yeah, well, I well, didn't want to. things you'll do. I did not want a fucking kid, that's for sure. Thank you. God, I didn't Anytime have one. you're in a relationship where you're like complaining to a friend about unhappiness, yeah. and the friend goes, Bad. Why don't you just 
tell her something like that. Yeah. And you go, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's what maybe are you that's how you do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that well, means you're in a bad I you're know. in a bad place. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, means you're he, in a bad place. That means you should not be in uh, that. You should be able to wherever you are in a relationship, you should be able to turn to the person you're with and say, This stinks. Yeah. I hate this. This is a bad And even thing. if it's not an easy thing to say, you should be able to say it and how, absorb it and deal how, with it. How about this one when you finally do break up and everyone yeah. around you goes, Yeah, we all know. Yeah. Oh, saw really? that one. Sure. Saw that coming a mile away. It's like, thanks. You couldn't yeah. have saved me five or six fucking years. Yeah. How about you speak up? Why are <laughs> yeah. you around me? Well, you're, what you're do you do? That's me what's a good going question, on. though. If you have a friend who's in a bad relationship and you they really something. and they fight, well, you know what? They probably did say, "Hey, are you sure that's cool that and she we talks just to you notice. like that?" No, no, no. It's see, and there's a whole thing where it's offset by this, and then they go, "All right, well." You gotta wait for a cue though from them. You can't just step in and <laughs> right, bad, yeah, you can't just bad go, you gotta leave chick or something. No. That she's a bitch, man. You gotta leave yeah. uh, and you lose a friend. But the second you get an inkling that they're not happy, yeah. that's your duty now as a friend to, to drag step them off. in and go, yep. Look, here's the deal. If you're even considering not doing this, I really am. don't fucking do it. Where were you when I needed you? Where the fuck was anybody when I needed them? Yeah, we fucked up. So it's a hard thing and then, to do. Or, or then it, it ends and they go, well, it's about time. Yeah. Oh, wow. thanks. Wow. So thanks. You couldn't going. fucking maybe have somebody write a note, your your yeah. thoughts, but someone else's handwriting and just fucking leave it in my car <laughs> yeah, one day? Yeah, some anonymous. Something. Leave some photos of the, the girl with fucking ten black guys. <laughs> Make me want to leave. <laughs> right. Help me out here. <laughs> now, I had a friend who was dating, a, he was, had a girlfriend. And one day he just woke up. Uh, he, this is the way he tells the story. He woke up and he got out of bed and didn't know why he was doing this. He just walked to her house, rang the doorbell, and found one of his best friends. Wow. Her. He just had a, a Ooh. And he thinks that it's some sort of weird, like. Psychic thing? Or yeah. But spiritual? what it was was they were clearly fucking for all ages. And his body, like, grabbed him by the collar and said, idiot, just look at this. It's happening yeah, yeah. every day. It's happening. How dumb are you? <laughs> that you haven't noticed. Things. But he thinks it's like this one time they fucked and he... He's crusted all of a sudden. Incredibly picked right. up Damn. on Damn. Nothing worse than uh, being cheated on if you do, like, care about somebody. Yeah. Or, or, although, I don't think I cared about the person, but I was... Uh, that whole infatuation thing I used to get myself caught up in yeah. infatuation with that love disguise on mm -hmm. infatuation can dress like love and it walks <laughs> around you like it's love and then you're like holy shit that's infatuation yep and uh there's a, a girl and then she un went, ends up with like one of my best friends which is Amazing. just like well can you just take one guy in between me and my best friend <laughs> you just it's it's easy for you to fuck go to a bar find anonymous guy oh fuck God. him yeah, and, and then like ease into my best friend. Yeah, you got shit. the pussy. You could get laid any time you want. Because now I don't have you or my best friend. Because I can't hang out with him. Because no. he's fucking you. No, it's like terrible. I was uh, when I was Fuck. writing at Conan. There was a woman that worked in the office, and we were fucking around. Like we would just fuck once in a while, and I liked her, <laughs> I but we didn't. Mostly we just fucked occasionally. And one night she went to we went to dinner, and she said, "I don't want to do this anymore because I want a serious relationship." And I, I want to be with somebody, you know, have a real companion. Mm. And I was like, wow. And I hadn't had a girlfriend in a long time. And I said, so you're saying you want to make, make the next step? And I was like, well, I I like you. Yeah, we, we should be. Oh, no. And I said, yeah, let's be together. Okay. And I was kind of really excited. Wow, it's I kind of have a girlfriend now. And yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, and, no. and she was like, it's something weird about the way she was acting as I was saying all this. She was like, yeah, okay. And then the next day I go to work and she's, no, she's going out with another writer. <laughs> <laughs> she meant, to, she was starting to say, I want a serious relationship, so I'm going out with this guy. Yeah, yeah. But I started saying all Thought this it was shit you. and she just let me train wreck into saying, <laughs> so now you and I are together. And she's like, all right. And the next day, she's with him, and they got they got married. Wow! <laughs> I was like, oh, I just felt like an idiot. <laughs> well, we got the phones lit on this topic. <laughs> Brian in Maryland, we're hanging with Louis C.K. By the way, let's get another plug in. Louis, next Tuesday, it's his new show on FX. Saw the first four episodes. I think the audience is going to love this one. Eleven o'clock next Tuesday on FX. Uh, Brian, what do you got? Hey, just classic. You know, and was talking about uh, you know everyone doesn't like whoever you hear about it after the fact well i was married seven damn years found out that everyone in my family hated her 
no one had the balls to tell me. And you know it's bad in whole when your grandmother even hates her. Uh, you know, yeah, they never have an opinion. You're supposed to love everybody. Come to find out, my grandmother didn't even like her. I was like, Jesus Christ, can anybody just tell me? Yeah, you realize no. that the whole family was like taught every time you'd leave the room. Well, they don't the want to lose would be that. like, oh, fuck, that bitch. Yeah. They don't want to lose that thing to talk exactly. about. Families love that. Yeah, they love so that. Families fucking... love having somebody right. that marries in that they hate. I think Louie made a good point, though. You, you don't know what to do. You know yeah, I mean? it's yeah. It, tough situation. It, it's, it's rough, especially when you're younger because you don't have the experience. No. Like now, As you get older, you just start realizing, I don't give a fuck. Oh, no. I'm going to be honest and say what no, I feel. No, exactly. And I tell people, I've met people that I know five minutes, and I'm like, yeah, no, uh, you got to leave her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, she's pregnant. It doesn't matter. Yeah, no, but, get out. Get but out. that's leave different. Now. The younger people you let, you just let be because you know they're going to figure it let out Let them themselves. crash and burn themselves. It's when they're in their yeah. 30s. You're like, yeah, exactly. What so what, you'll recover. Fuck? But that goes with everything, like even even relationships now. I find myself not not trying so hard to juggle and be dishonest. And this. No, no, you now I'm just that. honest guy. Yeah. And I'll say like, yeah, this is what's going on. Yeah. I, 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 there have been many times I've said I'm, I'm not boyfriend material guy anymore. Yeah. I'm just not. Yeah. I've been wrecked. Yeah. I've, I've been wrecked on relationships, and I've said this. You were boyfriend go, guy for 20 years. I, was for, for my I mean, 20 you're married year, in there, but boyfriend entire, guy since, for that. Since I've been 14 years old and had my first girlfriend, I have been in a, a relationship that has lasted a while. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and they usually overlapped. You know, I'd be like, oh, I found another girl, this one, that one, that. Until I realized, you know, I'm in my 40s. And I just got out of the relationship with Melinda that lasted like eight years. And then I just decided, you know what? Fuck this. Yeah. And, and, and then you, you, you get together with a girl, you start talking, and, and you, you try to tell them how you feel. And they're, at, at first they were just like, absolutely, that's exactly how I feel. Yeah. I don't want the relationship this. We're just having fun. We'll do that. A, a week, two weeks later, you notice like the relationship things start coming into play the texts and the little snide comments the claws come out the thing <laughs> and then you realize and i'll say uh this is starting to resemble something i don't like right you know and and the reason i'm not seeing you all the time yeah. is because i like that spontaneity yeah. i like the second something becomes routine and yeah. and a relationship it sucks the sex will start sucking. Yeah. It'll get mundane and uh, uh, repetitive. And if yeah, you don't as long see as someone you're... for a week or two weeks, you want to fucking, like, ravage them, you yeah. know? It, it, so why wreck it by having us have to sit next to each other and watch TV every night? Yeah, no, if it's not what you want, then it's not what you want. Yeah. It's not bringing any kind of comfort. I think most bad relationships are because somebody's doing that that doesn't really want to. Right. They're they in don't want to completely wanna lose be. the other person, so yeah. they, they play it. No, when I was, it, you, it's great when you get older and more honest. You don't care. Yeah, I mean, after I got uh... divorced, one of the first girls that I dated, we went out a few times. And then one day, we were out in front of my building, and it was in the middle of the day, and she kissed me, like, kind of passionately. And it was daylight, <laughs> and I was standing where I usually am walking with my kids in a stroller. And I hadn't had a thing with anybody, and it just brought home to me, like, I'm kind of with somebody. This is what this is. Yeah, yeah. And I don't like it. And then the next day, she was on the phone with me, and she's like, is there something weird? You, I'm getting a weird vibe from you. And my old me would have said, no, to no, exactly. no. Exactly. What just do like you that mean? Too, right? No, totally. Like, you know what it is? Is that I was thinking about this thing, and I, but, but no, you're awesome. And why is that? But I didn't. I just went, <laughs> yeah, you got a weird vibe. Because we kissed on the street, and it made me realize I got to stop seeing you. I'm not in. The, I can't do. The, I'm not at a point in my life where this is a good thing to do, and yeah. and I want to stop. And there was like this silence. And then she went, "Thank you very much." <laughs> wow, that was so much easier than a million. Like first, she was really stunned. <laughs> she yeah. liked the honesty, though. She was like, "Thank God for a." guy who did just fucking says it instead of me because i could have i would have hung in there for like six months exactly. of not enjoying a moment with her same fucking situation i didn't want to come out and say this is not good you're great but 
well, not great enough for me to hang out with. Because <laughs> 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 I mean, that's always the underlying thing that you don't want to say. I don't know why that snap judgment thing makes you go, no, no, yeah. it's not you. It's like, oh, well, it's your like body you're in trouble with your talking. mom. Exactly. Anthony, do you not want to fuck me anymore? No, no mom, I want to fuck you all day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, mommy. <laughs> now that's good. You fuck my pussy. <laughs> Very good. We got lots of great phone it's, calls it's, coming in. It's one of those situations you do. You get, uh, you get, you get older and... But the, the bad thing about it is you never want to sound cliche. And that, that whole, this point in my life. Yeah, it's not it, you. It just sounds like. Yeah, I, I try to say it in the blunt. Like the thing I try to do now with every relationship or even moment with somebody in the street is whatever is in my blunt. mouth. Because if you, I try to say exactly what I right. feel without if you, being if, polite. If you try to say it politely. It's a mess. It comes out sounding like a bad chick flick line. Well, because it sounds like you're, you're covering what's real. And mm -hmm. what you, what's real is not as bad as you think. It's the fact that you're covering yeah. makes her think that there's something much worse. It makes yep. you, her think that you just are grossed out by her. You don't like her. She's not attractive, and so you're making something up. Whereas something really, up. you're just being a coward. You're just, just being don't honest. Say, I don't want to do this. I don't want to. do I got this. a gut feeling. I don't like it. I'm going I don't want to stop now. Yeah, I want to stop. Yeah. That's it. That's, That's exactly it. I'm done. It, I'm done the with the thing of talking to you. <laughs> you guys are the exception, though. Obviously, you know. I mean, that's well, we so got hard. to that's, the exception yeah. through divorce. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> we got the there. exception came very late. I'm just saying that's life. so Fucking... hard. It sounds great, oh. but it's so hard for most people to do. It shouldn't be. If you do it every minute, then you know. I mean, there's like a million stupid Mark Twainy type quotes about if you would never lie, you always don't have to remember anything. If you if yeah, you always yeah, tell yeah. the truth, you never have to remember anything. Mm. Yeah, when you start lying, it's oh, let, shit. you just start let, creating a. Let me grab this. Bad li I'm a bad liar. There's a lot of people in marriages who are like, I shouldn't be in this, but how long could I possibly live? You know? <laughs> <laughs> just resigning like, is... themselves to death. <laughs> yeah. Let just... me grab this call. I don't want to lose this guy. He's miserable. Maybe we can help him out. Jim in Staten Island. Jim. Oh, man. this is Jimmy Greco, listener number three from a very long time. Ago. Oh, right on, Jimmy Greco. I re I remember you. Yeah, what's up, boys? I'm in a miserable marriage with a miserable fat cunt that the only thing she does is the only interaction she has with me is what's your check look like, okay? Uh, I fucking, the minute I turn around and I go to go stand up for myself, I just have a substance problem. So right away, are you using? It's just a miserable fucking existence. I, I would fucking leave, but I have a beautiful four-year-old son. And I don't want to leave this boy with this sick fucking cunt. Okay, and all, I jerk off more now than I ever did before. This morning, as I'm getting ready to work, I said, let me troll X and that sex. And let me look for something to beat the fuck off to. Okay? <laughs> beat the fuck off to. Well, listen to this poor guy. <laughs> I know. He's just miserable. Uh, all, how is your check, and are you drinking? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to know. It all, it, I, haven't had, I haven't had a drink or a drug in fucking 109 days. And I said, now I'm going to Wow, 109 wow. days. Jeez. When you're saying I thought you were fucking say 109 years. days, you, yeah, gotta, right. you better yeah. go to a meeting. Yeah, you're, you're not a meeting now. You're not going to make 115, <laughs> sir. Oh, no. Hey, uh, it also says she beats you. Is that true? Oh, she's taking a couple of swings at me here right now. I don't want to put it through a fucking you know wall. Did you ever hit her? No, no. I, 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 did a, I did a call to her once. She fucking ran into the bathroom, and I fucking popped open the door. And, and then she sunk down to the ground, oh, you know, she got cowering, and I said, don't you ever fucking raise your fucking hands to me again, okay? Why? But, uh, all right, wow. listen, listen, that's so your... Miserable. That's that your, was like a treat. <laughs> and Jim, I that's, this four-year-old is having a ball or something. Oh, <laughs> these, God. People, these people sound <laughs> awesome. He wasn't home when this shit happened. Now, Jim, that's... All right, uh, listen, I, I want to jump in. That, that's your side of the story, and I, I believe every word of it. Mm. Now, and why would she stay in this thing, then, Lou? Well, I don't know. I don't know why. Some people, there's always one like person. she obviously is miserable, too. There's always one person in a bad relationship who's perfectly happy to be in a bad relationship. There's always one person yeah. who's like, uh, who's fine with it. Who's fine with just constant shitty. Yeah. The only thing I would say to you, sir, is that you're not going to lose your kid if you, lose, if you leave this woman. You get, you get to keep the kid. Right. But you want to know what, though? I don't want him to have that in the back of his mind. You know, uh, you're a coward. <clears throat> now nah, the other way to Jim, look at it is your 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 son's learning that if somebody who just, who just called me a coward. You, Jim, you, I, you, you just calm down. Yeah. You're calling a you're calling a comedy show. Please yeah. try to remember that, <laughs> Jim. It's look, not. It, this oh, wait, isn't. Wait, this isn't this kind of but, show. We're doing the best we can. Yeah, I have no problem saying it, Jim. <laughs> exactly. I hope he said it. I, and because I was there, I was a coward too. Like, why are you staying? I just first of all. Uh, 
I don't want to lose half my shit. That's something. Well, that is well, that's, that's a very good answer. We've talked about that yeah, on the show a lot. It's not a, it's not a good reason to stay. It's a good question. Okay. I don't want I don't want to leave my kid. Number three. What yeah. what the fuck do I do? The only person who's going to win is people the procrastinate. Video. People don't pay their bills on time. You're going to no. fucking go file for divorce. You know what a pain in the ass no, it is? No, it's a huge pain get in the ass. Get a lawyer. Yeah, but here's the thing. Shit to get it started. The two things. I don't want to lose my kid. I don't want to lose half my shit. Mm. I mean, they're both beatable. Because, first of all, you, you, you have this idea that your kid's going to grow up thinking my dad left us. He, 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 it'll be true if you leave the classic way of just like take off, dead beat dad, and, and just show up once a week to that, take your kid to an awkward fucking little league game. They have nothing to say to you. I remember seeing this father with his daughter, and it was so clear that it was like a visitation. Yeah, and they're walking on the street, and he goes, uh, "Well, we got two hours left. What do you want to do?" And she goes, "I don't know." Oh, <laughs> it was so geez, depressing. He really, oh he really gave this thought. Yeah, so it's not that's 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 a shitty father who divorced and then just kind of marginalized their kid. But if you fight for your right to be with your kid, and you fight for your custody time, uh, then what your kid will because if you don't do that, the thing you teach your kid is that if a person is abusive to you, you stay with them anyway. It's not a good signal to give a kid yeah. is that if you're in a shit marriage with a bad person or you're a bad person, that these guys stay together. So mm -hmm. that isn't, so I don't buy the, you're not going to The kid's aware. Kid. Jim, the, kid, the kid's yeah, the aware kid's that living a in a nightmare. house of misery. Oh, right. So you, if you separate, then both you become happier people, and the kid lives in two homes that are happier than one shit home. So that's a plus for the for the kid. And then as far as half your shit, well, fucking be a man and raise twice the money. Just work harder. I mean, really, it's that I liked the fact that I mean, I am I I'm paying shit to my ex because she didn't have a job when we split up. Uh, but I like I go I'm, I it puts me at zero and then it just motivates me. I work much harder now because uh, I've got and I and anyway, I had to take care of her before. And it actually, if you look at it this way, it reduces your uh, nut with the other person to a check. You have one check that you write. Yeah. I mean, it's not like that. When you're married, it's not like that. You fight over money. She spends whatever she wants. She's got your bank book. But yeah, once you get true. divorced, you write one check, that's and it's it. contained to that. And you it's know what it is. That. And you call that zero. You just move the zero line in your mind <laughs> to <laughs> after a, she's gotten that's hers. exactly how I rationalized it. That's, and then you go zero. Now I got not, I, I, I was happy to give away whatever I had so that I could be at a clean me zero. Oh, and then when I, if I raise 10 bucks, I spend eight of it on Snickers bars. <laughs> can, can I ask you a question Shove about the that ninth love? dollar up my no. ass. It's my business. If, if you didn't have the kids, that would be a tough check to write, though. Like in Ant's case, he had to write that check, and he had no connection with her. Like he didn't oh, have yeah, that kids would, yeah, that he yeah, loved that's... during that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. with you, you almost could rationalize it. Like, well, because of my my uh, relationship with her, I got these right. two beautiful daughters. Oh, well, child support and alimony are two little, totally yeah. different no, I, I, things. But it, yeah. it makes it a little easier to write sure. her the check. Is yeah. what, I, I'm just saying, I don't know. Yeah. Or does it? Well, child support is, yeah, I mean, it's just a totally different category. Child support is something that, you pay until the kids are yeah no I understand yeah, that. twenty one years old but I'm saying the actual check to her is a little easier because you know you had the kids with her but in Anthony's case just writing to oh a, I did a, not want to write that check yeah no it's totally no. easier <laughs> didn't want to write that check the the best check was the last check that was yeah, sure. that was when it was all done and yeah. then I was yeah. like oh I got a raise yeah <laughs> yeah well Jim uh, did we help you out there. You made me feel a little bit better. Actually, Lewis made me feel better because he lost a lot more than, than I could ever lose. So, you know. All right. And I'm sorry I called you a coward, but I, I've, been, I, I, I've been there. I was in a relationship I should have got out of, uh, safe to say, six years before I did. Oh, boy, i got to tell you this. Congratulations on your son. Thank you. And enjoy him as much as you can. And, and, and. It was the and, sappy you know, part. You know, fucking gift, man. Oh. I mean, I love my boy more than anything. He, all he wants to do is play wee, cuddle. And fucking just hang out, and 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 I love them, and I I, I just can't. If you get if you get if you get divorced and you fight for uh, time with your kid, you'll have that t time with with your kid by yourself, and you'll thank fucking shit Christ for that, <laughs> or whoever you pray to. Good luck with show, man. Good luck with your show. Thanks, uh, buddy. He's, he's, yeah, it's gonna be a great one, Jim. All right. Wow, now uh, we've just turned into a relationship show. Look yeah. at these fucking things. That happens. We could take a break and take more phone calls. We could do that. L L Lou, are you sticking around or you got to yeah. go? Yeah, I'm here for another 
45 minutes or so. Perfect, man. All right. Louis C.K. in studio. His new show, Louis, on FX, next Tuesday night at 11 o'clock. Definitely make sure you, you check it out. All right? All right. The Opie and Anthony Show on the, on the virus. Sirius XM. Louis C.K. in studio. Louis C.K. on Twitter, by the way. He's a good one to follow. And what do we get on LouisCK.net? Anything? Anything good? I never uh, You don't even update anymore. it, right? <laughs> I got to start. I used to love my website. It's just a lot of work. Right now, the, uh, the old thing of, with the Bobby Cannavale thing is still up there. It's still up there. There's, there's uh, tour dates from April. <laughs> I see that. All right. None, none of this is updated. This shouldn't even be on the one sheet, Steve. Yeah, no, I have. I mean, I, I'd like to have the website more active. I used to like it. I used to like putting stuff up there. How was the brokerage? Brokerage was awesome. I was on Long Island. I was trying to get away from the, oh, uh, I had such the a baby good time thing. there. I'm, we're just not ready. I'm, I can't separate yet. No, sure. I got to be right in there for a little longer. Yeah, of course. I mean, but I was trying to get away. She was cool with it. She was like, go see Louie. She's she was jealous because she loves yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, a no, poopy diaper, a scream, and a no, fucking no, bottle you got to play. You got the rest of your life to do that. It's not that long that it ends up. being. Everyone says about three months, right? Is that? Yeah, about I, mean, it? I don't know. I think uh, where it gets easier, it starts to a little bit. They stop being a critical, like a critical case. Yeah, the kid starts having a little bit of a rhythm, but they go up and down. You're going to have plenty of. I feel like times. I'm in the emergency room every night. Yeah, it's kind like, of like it's that. like it's it's touch and go every night. When does this end? Look, like tell that. me so out. No, a lot of it is. <laughs> he knows. A lot of it is your perception too. Like I remember when we first uh, had our baby, uh, uh, the doctor said if she cries and she you just can't make her stop crying, call a doctor. Like if she's really totally out of control, can't stop crying. Yeah. So one night the baby was crying and crying. And I said, I think this is it. We got to call the doctor. She just, this has been, you know. So we, I call the doctor to something like the fucking midnight, and the doctor says, "How long has she been crying?" We looked at each other. I'm like, five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> they were talking like but an hour. But it felt hour or after something. five minutes like an this eternity. is totally a disaster. Not but gonna it's just, stop. Yeah. It's just perception. You just get used to stuff. You, you, I'm you, used to it now. Yeah, it's they're, more what's going on inside of you than the baby knows exactly what it's doing. The baby's they, a genius. But they don't, they don't teach you shit in the hospital. You're there for no, two days. No, of course not. Teach us some real shit. Like, they don't tell you that the kid will make some really fucked up noises in the middle of the night, which you will be convinced is something horrible. Yeah. And it's just normal. It's like Jay Moore explains in his book. It's like... You're living in a zoo or something. There's a lot of animal noises coming yeah, from the crib. Yeah. They don't tell you that. I thought it was a snore or, or a cry. That's all you're worrying about. Yeah, no. But these weird, fucked up noises. doesn't breathe right at first because it's still figuring out its lungs. They don't all tell you this stuff. stuff. Yep. Oh, that's pretty creepy. But, <laughs> but now a lot of those noises <laughs> we hear, we're like, oh, okay. That's that's what that is. That's the, yeah. The yeah, yellow pa- noise it's all parents are learning. That's what they're, it's all... The kid's raising you, really. I mean, the kid knows. The kid develops at its own pace. Yeah. But you have a learning curve. And uh, not as many feedings, so we're good. We're starting to sleep yeah. a little bit. Knock on whatever. Uh, it'll change. The ride. Uh, it it'll changes get, again? It'll get bad again, yeah. It always does. What are you talking and about? And the kid has growth spurts. Uh, uh, spur- growth spurts where they just constantly feed. Does she breastfeed the kid? Yeah. So there'll be times where she just she'll start just saying this fucking kid is chewing the shit out of my nipple i can't take it it gets really really hard and then there, they'll be like she could get her nipple get raw or infected all kinds of stuff it just gets it just then she'll have to pump breast milk because she's making too much and the kid's not feeding enough holy if shit. the kid's not eating enough and well, there's been there. her, her breasts get bloated so she has to pump the breast milk out and then you have these rotting little jars of breast milk around the house <laughs> so he's oh, been there god oh, no it's just damn. it's well, just been so there. many things if you have do you have a dog no 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 we had our dog when our dog got mad like he, dogs will punish you you know like if you leave them at home too long we'd come home the dog would go through the baby's diapers and spread baby shit all over the house Ooh. Shit like that, and you come home, motherfucker, could... just screaming at the dog. And I could not imagine the that baby's one. crying. You know, it gets tough. Oh, it's damn. endurance. Boy, I was looking for. for and then the teeth come today. in, and that All fucking right. hurts. Right, and then the teeth fall okay, out. I get it. And then the new teeth <laughs> come right, in. I get it. I actually brought this up, hoping you were going to help me out today. No, it's well, you get used to it. Is what happens. You get immune to it, and then it just it's what all. You do. 
good. Yeah, this becomes <laughs> what you do. No, so far so good. I'm fucking it's good. I'm loving it. So, but yeah, the brokerage is a good club. Six. Yeah, I, I really I was dying because I haven't seen you in a while. I'm like fuck, and it was right there. I like those Long Island rooms. They're fun. Just don't like getting out there, right? The What's traffic, it? by the way, ah, uh, that's too that's too local. We'll, we can move no, on. it's insane. I know. I hate that. To get to New York City to Long Island yeah. is just. No, it's a little bottleneck of one road. And it yeah, just takes all night. All right, let's go uh, back to the phones. Jeff in Jersey, hanging with Louis C.K. today. That was a great oh. setup, Jeff. Let's go. Hello. Hey. How are you? Great. That doesn't matter. Hey, no, I just wanted to. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to make a comment about that guy who was uh, staying with his marriage because of his son. Um, I'm a long-time listener, and I used to listen to Anthony about his nightmare stories and his uh, wedding, and it was, felt like he was talking about myself. And I would say the same thing. I need, I wanted to stay for my kids. And they got to an age where one day one of my kids turns to me and says. Dad, you and Mama are never going to get along, huh? Because we are so unhappy that you guys are together. And it really, really woke me up to realize that, yeah, me and my wife were miserable with each other. And uh, when I was upstairs, she was downstairs. I was in the kitchen. She was in the living room, totally avoiding each other, uh, never doing anything together as a family with the kids. So I neglected to realize that me miserable, my wife miserable, made the household miserable, the kids were miserable. Yeah, that's what happens. Uh, so, fucking trotting around the house. Yeah, there's not this is spaghetti the, at the wall. This thing of trying to stay together. Yeah. If it's not oh. working, I mean, if you 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 know, if you feel like when you have a fight, you get somewhere. I think like that's the key. It's like, how do you know whether to stick uh, in there? Yeah, yeah. I think if if you feel like after you have a fight, you just made it. Op, you know, made it an opportunity to open up, you know, like you go, oh, okay, look, I get it, and you see a little more of the other, if you feel like you see the other person's point of view, but if you leave, if you have a fight with your wife or husband, and you're now in the other room going, you fucking cunt, it's you just fucking nasty, and you nasty. just just had to get away from each other because it got that bad, even that, that happens, but if that's chronic, then it's like, yeah, I don't think it, I, I there's nothing wrong if you look at it from like a biological, National Geographic you know, how lions mate and that kind of thing. If the, the idea that we come together as a couple, you cohabitate, you build a home, you have children, you raise the children past a certain critical point, and then you separate and raise the children in two separate homes. Mm -hmm. What the fuck is wrong with that? Yeah. There's you know nothing what? wrong there, with that. There was nothing wrong with that, and that's where I came to realize a long time, 10 years into a nightmare of a marriage, and I finally came to realize with when my my kid was finally old enough to say that to me, and I was like, you know what, they're right. And I saw, I started the proceedings. I filed for divorce, and uh, you know what? Now now everybody's happy. When the kids are with me, they're happy. I'm happy. I get to enjoy them, appreciate them, uh, make memories with them, and they do the same thing with the mother. I call up to say goodnight. I talk to them, see how the school was or whatever, and, and they tell me, yeah, we did this with mommy, we, we did that with mommy, and, and uh, so I see a totally big different change. Good you for know? you, man. And, and uh, no, man, I just wanted to tell that guy, you know what, uh, uh, I know for one thing, my wife used to uh, torture me with, uh, you're going to lose, you're going to be the one that... But they're short under the stick. You're never going to see your kids. You're not going to have the visitation with them. But I'm going to have sole custody, and it's all bullshit. The court systems don't want it that way anymore. It might no, they don't. They don't. It's very, very hard. Oh, really? It's very hard to lose custody of your kids. If you're, if you're a father and you get divorced, and I'm talking straight out of my ass, <laughs> but if you, if, you go, if you go to the court or whatever or, you know, when you get yeah. divorced, if you make a case and say, I want this amount of time with my kids, yeah. it's there yeah. they have they have to prove that there's something tractably and like convicted convictable wrong with you. Some, right, some right. other evil exactly. shit. It outside. has to be like you're a fucking chronic criminal. Even if you have <laughs> done some even if you have a criminal fucking history, they can't just take away your they can't take away your your yeah. your rights to custody of your kids because your wife is mad at you. Courts want it this way now. They give you 50% uh, custody of your children because they don't want any deadbeat fathers out there. And as far as uh, uh, that, you're going to lose all your money to all that, and that is all crap. You know what? They have a they have a system now, and you know, like like when I was married, 
I was lucky if I was getting a hundred dollars a week out of my pay. You know what? I got divorced. I got a raise. I get half my paycheck now. Well, you that's exactly now. the thing, and you get control of it. So, I mean, you are you are, unless there was something weird going on in your house, you're paying your wife half of everything anyway, or more, like you're saying. And any father that says well, I got divorced and I my wife took my kids away is a liar. He gave his kids up. It means he didn't put the fight up, and he didn't, and he also didn't step up and become a. You got to change your life. You have to change the way you're going to do your life. You have to start. I mean, you have to rearrange your life so that you can take care of your kids by yourself. Mm -hmm. But it is better for the kids, I think. All right. Than hanging in there. Thanks, Jeff. Hey, no problem. Thank you, guys. This is turning into a very special. Yeah, I know, man. It's fucking very serious special. shit. <laughs> what else is going on out there in the these world? These guys always sound like that. Huh? Yeah. I don't know what happened. <laughs> got this uh, wife. She was a fucking cunt. Fat I got cunt. So wife. I love my kids. I, they all sound like that. They don't really sound like the most appealing people. The guys <laughs> say that. My fat I cunt shall. wife, and yeah. I'm. I, I, I describe myself. I look like Brad Pitt. I went to Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking catch over I'm here. The greatest guy ever. Right. Fat cunt. <laughs> Fat. But see, you should see me. I'm beautiful. But see, it's a I'm special a genius. And it's a special case once again because he tells the story. He gets married on his wedding night. He looked at the ceiling and had tears in his eyes. He knew he made a mistake. Mm. Like, yeah. oh, a lot of people oh, no, don't do. oh, don't yeah. feel like they're making day a mistake one. from day one. Day yeah. one. Maybe a couple of years in, you start going, "Holy shit!" Oh, what the for fuck is this about? No, I think it, most people do. They just oh, you think most people realize? Yeah, a lot of people I think get married because they're trying to fix their. Relationship. A lot of people get married. Yeah. A lot of people get married to make their girlfriend happy. <laughs> like yeah. they don't get married to begin. The, it's like what you're saying about you're waiting for somebody to come and pick the real parents to pick yeah. up the kid. I remember when we were at the hospital and my wife was in labor. The whole time I thought, um, I, I realized that I was really thinking we're going to go through this. She's going to go through labor and go through this thing that we've been training for and reading books about. <laughs> yeah. And then the, she's going to have a kid. Then we're going to go home and get a pizza. And I did not picture taking a kid home with us. Like when we put the kid in the thing in the car, I was like, holy, holy, holy shit. This is, it. this is our lives now. Oof. That's so. And I think it's like that for some people really get married because they're like, my girlfriend's pissed off. We'll have a wedding and then she'll feel better. And then you realize, oh my then God, what happens? I'm, yeah. I'm fucking married now. Yeah. You, you, know, you had the wedding, I, and now you're married. I, yeah. I, I obviously take a lot of trips to Philly, and usually we get up and go. Let's pack your bag. I pack my bag. Mm -hmm. I'll call for the car, and we're out of here, right? Yep. That same, same little thing took about... It's a lot harder. At least two extra hours. Yeah, it's oh, like doing get... the same same thing you're used to doing, but n completely numb your right arm and your yep. left arm, and then attempt to do that. What you're used to doing. That's how I felt. You know like, what? It's great though. That's what that part I liked. That your life gets that much harder because you just get more. You get you adapt and you get more competent. Like I remember feeling like uh, a Vietnam so, like the guys in Nam who like have those big they have big heavy the rifles big packs yeah. on their yeah, back. Yeah, you got like a, a gun belt down the right side, <laughs> right, right. and when when you stand up, all this clanging armor just <laughs> and you're walking with all this shit, and that's me at like you know yes. taking my kids to the to the to sta to Coney Island. I take them to Coney Island in the summer a lot. And we just got, and I've got all this shit. I've got each kid's bag. I've got my stuff. I've got all that fucking crap. And I'm like, let's move out. And then we start moving a few clicks down the beach. We get to a bad beach. All right, we need to move. I've got one crying, so i got to pick her up. The other one I got by the hand, and you just move, and you become. It just sounds like so much. Well, work. you att if you attack it like a like a, I'm a I'm a guy, and I'm you know what I mean. I've got muscles, and yeah, I can make this work. You're uh, the Sarge. Yeah, <laughs> and then it's positive if you look at it that way. It really is to me a, a point of uh, like an attitude thing. If you really are like waiting for mom to tell you, give you a list of shit to do, and you're just sort of like, mm, yes, I, dear, then it's depressing. But if you take it on, like, here's what we're doing. And then you get good at that, getting the I'm, shit in the car. It gets satisfying. I'm amazed at how, how well I do shit now. Yeah. I, I always sucked at doing shit, but I could set up some shit. Yeah, you'll get... Pack you, and plays and all the... They're like, good. Plays, they're like, you set that up really quick. I'm like, oh, yeah, you, you fucking know, did. It's, if you bring male skills to raising a kid, it's I, really satisfying. Yeah, I don't... Yeah.
I got male uh, skills all of a sudden because yeah. before that I was useless. I have to think Completely about Completely useless. How quickly I can tear apart my AR15, clean it and put it back well, that's, together that's, again. There you go. <laughs> I, it's pretty much where I'm at with uh being good at stuff. <laughs> See, and here's this without the emotional attachment you do have with exactly. this, this Exactly. But I'll tell you child. something. That's what makes I'm it I'm just hearing logistics. Yeah, you're just hearing logistics. Pretending to come into that fucking cunt for as long as you did. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should be sainted for that. <laughs> I really yeah, do. Believe me. That's that's you should be sainted. That took courage. That was not I'm serious. Not that's the I thing could. that everybody does. Most guys do. would just say, ah, yeah. fuck it. Yeah, I'll and just they, what, fuck her, have a kid, see how that exactly. goes. Exactly. No, it, it, the, the most frightening thing to me would be to have a kid. You would have had a bad, that would have been bad for you. Yeah, not good. Not good. No. I, I like, um, I like places like Atlantis. Yeah. And Vegas. And uh, I like just going there. Yep. Drop of a hat. I it's like pretty great to be able to. Going there. That was one of the coolest things when I got divorced was realizing I can just get on a plane and go to another city. Like, and yeah. I don't even have to tell anybody. I got a passport that's weird. and an Amex. Yeah. That's that's it. <laughs> yeah, I, you want. That's all I fuck. I don't need suitcase. I don't need oh, that's amazing. clothes on my back. I'll buy shit when I get there. It's fuck amazing. It. Yeah. Don't pack socks. Just buy socks. That's it. Yeah. Fuck it. Or packing in a hotel and just going, I'm going to leave half these clothes in this room. Yeah, who cares? Throw some stuff away. Just get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, uh, let me go to Dominic in the Poconos. We love our phone calls from the Poconos. The Dahmer. Always the Dahmer. What up, Dom? Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm excited to talk to you guys. I'm a little nervous. Sorry. Well, we're not excited. Oh, calm down. At all to be talking to you. But go ahead, sir. Yeah. That's There's no job. reward or consequence in either... Whatever however it goes. Exactly. Yeah. Don't worry. It's very rewarding. Um, I'm actually calling uh, because a friend of mine, uh, Carl, he, uh, about a month ago today, I think it was, um, he decided to get a divorce, and his wife, who's in the news, uh, if you look in the news, um, his wife shot and killed him. Because he wanted a divorce? Yeah, because uh, I'm not sure what the specific fight was over, uh, but she shot him four times and killed him, yeah. Where was this? Uh, in Butler, New Jersey. <laughs> Boy, the crowd has been quiet all day until that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, uh, I enjoyed What that. do you want us to do with that, Dominic? It, I don't know. I mean, he was a huge listener of you guys. He loved His name was, you know, he was Carl from Jersey. He called in. He had the deep voice. And I want to see if I could plug his website because uh, they're taking donations for his kids. I'm guessing it's Wait, the guy used to listen to the show? He loved you guys. Ew. Oh, man. What the I hate hell? losing a listener. What was his best phone call on our show? I don't remember. Well, how about one time? Um, Never well, mind. Actually, you're right. You... No, you're right, actually. What am I trying to do? <laughs> if you to listen make to something your, uh... out of this shit. You're Jesus. absolutely right. What? <laughs> Will you plug the dead guy's website? we got to move on. Okay. Jesus Christ. It's <laughs> carlmirasola.org. It's M-I-R-A-S-O-L-A. Even in death, he has a .org. You would oh, think yeah, he would be moved up to .com <clears throat> status. Oh, well. <laughs> He's an organization. He's an NPR. <laughs> Carl said he was a part of Sanchez Band for me. Died, gunshot once. Jesus. Their bedroom. 911 call. Yeah, well, well, what happened? What, she fucking get mad? Yeah, she, she was fucking wacko. She was a real piece of shit. As, as long as I know her, so fuck her. But, uh, I mean, she just wanted to... I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to fuck her. 13-year-old girls, 7-year-old twins. She left Ugh. kids behind? They were in the house. Yeah, I mean, what? that's what they fucked up. They were in the house. They were in the house. That's when just wonderful. Shot. Women, did she kill herself, too? She kill uh, herself? I don't no. think so. Well, but she's not going to be around for the kids. No, but she's, uh, she's wheelchair-bound, too. What? Uh, uh, she, was she before? She had multiple sclerosis. The, yeah. In a, how the, the guy, fuck did she aim the gun? The guy allowed someone in a wheelchair to kill him with a, sh a shotgun? Was it a shotgun? Did he just get behind her and yeah, right. push her out the door? Give her a push. How did she keep the barrel straight? MS, they're fucking waving that, that shit is. all over. He used to call all the time. Travis remembers taking all his calls. Yeah, Travis? I, I totally remember this guy. He had a deep voice, just like that caller said. He would call... At least three times a week. Well, get it. He never had any like special calls. It was just like, "Hey, Carl from Jersey." He would 
say what he had to say. Get a car from it. Jersey Call. See if oh. you can find one. I, I usually... Uh, uh, you're the dead guy. <laughs> see if anything was ominous. I'm usually good with this. I don't remember Carl from Jersey. Have you heard a squeaky wheelchair wheel and a gun <laughs> cocking? In the background, that, that's a Carl call? <laughs> Jesus, man. I would assume Carl would appreciate this. Yeah, definitely. Please, guys, uh, somebody donate money because this kid's really, really need it. Why? Yeah. Wow. He's dead. Oh, with the kids. The kids. Sorry, Who's yeah. handling the money to get to the kids? Yeah, exactly. Her? Yeah. Huh? The wife. Right. No, He's more bullets. Sister. Who's what? Carl's sister? Yeah, she's great. She really is. This is really... And so is she caring for the kids? Who's got the kids? Uh, yeah, she's caring for the kids. Oh, oh there it is, let's say. In loving memory. Ugh. Oh. You only got one little picture of the poor guy up there? Jesus. Uh, 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 a no. couple of guys at my job uh, set Not up. Much of a tribute. How do I How do I donate fucking money? Jesus, you got me. How do I do this? It's Get a, a PayPal. PayPal. Oh, hey, PayPal. I don't have a PayPal account. Who doesn't have a PayPal account? I don't have a PayPal account. I have a PayPal account. I don't have a you fucking... You never bought anything on eBay? PayPal. Then use your PayPal and give this fucking family money and I'll just give you the money. On my pal. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't paying him. I ain't paying that. On my pal. All right, so the website, I'm sure some of the listeners will help you out here. They're uh, Carl's friend. What's the website you can again? Just go, it's easier if you Carl, go to carlskids.bbnow.org Carl's and oh, trying Uncle to spell Paul. his last name. All right. carlskids.bbnow.org, as right. in the letters B. 1877 Carl's Kids. <laughs> All right, Tommy. Thanks for really bringing the show down. Oh, well, yeah, that was good. This yeah. lady well, we in a wheelchair a... shot her husband in front of the kids. Yeah, that... <laughs> yeah really. What do you want us <laughs> to do with that? the greatest thing I ever heard. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, thanks thanks all the... wheel wheelchair bound lady with MS. I'm sure that makes shot her bless. fucking kid's dad in front of them. That's... Nice. Yeah, That's man. Turn out well. Yeah, the PayPal shit will fix the kids right up, I'm sure. <laughs> right then. After yeah. seeing their that's, father that's gun down. A windfall. Yeah. A, a no couple problem. wheeze and they'll they'll erase the memory yeah, right? uh, of what they saw that day. That's Just all. enough to get him a nice new shirt and oh, some pants. Fuck and, a, a. Mm. and how about we get this poor guy at dot .com? Org. Well, dot .org? I think Jesus. you need that to raise money. You need a dot .org for, yeah, for money you raising? Yeah, .org and you raise some money. Uh, That's you know. organization, so it's yeah. like, it so, has to be so, a... So it's legit? Yeah, it's all legit. Oh, really? Non for non for profit, so I guess? Every, yeah, probably. Not for profit. So every dot .org website is legit? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Everything no. on the internet is. Of course. No scams Believe going on. Oh, you're I'll still here to up. depress oh, us, Dominic? Jesus yeah, Christ. Sorry, but PayPal's actually taking 5% of everything, too. Yeah, well, they gotta. They don't give a shit about that fucking. <laughs> gotta <laughs> earn a living too. Really? It's not their kids. Donation, come on. They five, don't give a fuck. Five percent seems uh, that seems okay. Yeah, I mean, right. if you said twenty five percent, then you yeah. might have something. It's not, not like they raised to... it. It's not like that. Oh, a woman in a wheelchair killed a, your kid's father. All right, we're gonna up the fucking percentage <laughs> yeah. then, because we are asked because we just like doing that. Yeah, we really suck. It's funny to us. If she has MS, what do you think she really was shooting at that day? <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe there was a she was bat. Kill herself. Might have been a bat in the house. <laughs> right. Who knows? There might be a story behind this. See, well, we're trying to make some humor out of this. He really gave us a tough task. What kind today. of what kind of gun was it? I have no idea. Had to be a shotgun. No way she could aim. Uh, by the way, yeah, dog shit a, sniffer spray. needs beer yeah. money, so he just set up a website, dog shit sniffer dot org. Dot org. I'll do it. Dot org. Him. Yeah. Oh what? Travis has a call from Jersey call. All right, Don. Wow. Hold on. This Let's is here. Nice creepy work. dead guy. This, now we this get is to hear from uh, almost four years ago. And, and wow. what? All right. Is wow. there? Does it need a setup or probably not? Uh, you put your setup. feet on the desk or something. The guy's dead. Him. All right, let's hear it's this. the setup. Let's go to they're gonna play Welcome. Lacrosse, right? They're going to play lacrosse with your head. <laughs> so. Let's go to Carl in Jersey. Carl, what's up? Opie, you put your feet up on that <laughs> desk at 9 o'clock. You're my hero. You're my hero. <laughs> <laughs> and that fiasco with those dopey bozos. I love you. I, I, I'm going to buy X for everybody I meet for the next 15 minutes. I swear to God. All right, thank you, sir. You're amazing. Thank you, bro. I lost one of the guys that thinks I'm a hero. Ha! Ah. Fuck! Guy thought I was a hero. He's dead. That means I only have nine fans left. God damn it! Oh well. Wow. I remember him now that I hear his voice. I don't swear. remember anybody. I swear, I remember that guy. All right. Uh -huh. Well, his uh, his kids need help. Poor feller. Thank you, guys. What a bitch. You ever have somebody come up to you and say like, "Oh, I have. I know somebody who's really good friends with you." In your past, you guys were really good pals. Oh, who? 
Mike Watson. No idea who you're talking about. <laughs> he I said don't you guys know. used to hang out all the time. Yeah, you know, no. Mike Watson. I don't know any even the name Mike sounds weird <laughs> to me right now. <laughs> And then you start the feeling time. bad, like you don't want it to get whoever it is. Like, geez, maybe I had a really good friend. But I, Worse and is so I start going, oh, yeah, Mike Watson. Oh, yeah. That if I say the name rings a bell, it means I have no fucking no, clue. Because no. I'll say that. It's like, I don't remember, but the name rings a bell. No. It does it. Uh, the worst is when, when people come up to you and don't even say a friend. They just go. You don't remember me, do you? I had, <laughs> like, you know, something. I had that happen. Swear to God, Saturday I was yeah, at this party, I, and and a high school friend was there, so he brought some of his friends, I guess, to the party. And this guy, Rob, I'm leaving. He goes, "You don't remember me, do you?" I go, "Yeah, I remember you. You fucking hated me in high school. Never hmm. paid attention to me. But now, because I have some kind of quote fame, you feel like you have a connection to me. Yes, I do know who you are. Uh, we were, we <laughs> were I didn't say wrong, the last part, Rupert, yeah. but I'm we like, were wrong, I'm, Rupert, I'm like, and you." You were right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. I'm like, of course I remember you. You fucking hated me in school, thought I was a fucking nerd, and, and never paid any attention to me no. in high school. Yeah, I do remember you. I don't remember it when they say that. They go, you don't remember me. And I, I'm, in this I'm case, trying. I did remember. Now I just go, no, Yeah, I it's don't. another, I'm, I'm the same way with the with the honesty now. Yeah. <laughs> it, with people that I don't know. It's like, no. Do you remember me? Nope. No. Oh, sorry. my God, I'm insulted. Uh, That's. I'm sorry you feel that well, way. You, so you shouldn't have go. quizzed me like that. No. You should have said, hi, my name is, no. uh, back in whatever, we fucking hung out at the... Uh, but you quizzed me, and now you're paying I, for it. I did a show last <laughs> night in New Jersey, and this kid came up to me afterwards, and he had a folder with him, and he said, I have to talk to you, okay? And I'm like, uh... <laughs> what are these? It's this dossier and He goes, have. I have some... Uh, he goes, and I... This is weird, and I'm like, yeah, it is, and I'd like to stop it now by walking <laughs> yeah. away. And he goes, uh... <laughs> he goes, I, wa I want to be a writer... And I want your show to be good. So, and I go, I don't write, I have writers. I just stop them there. I don't have writers on my show. I write it all myself. And he goes, I don't believe that. And I said, yeah, I do. And he goes, you can't write a whole show by yourself. So I just now start walking away. It's like, yeah. And he goes, just do. please read my material. Just take it and read it. And I go, no. I'm not going to read it. So I'm not going to take it from you and pretend and yeah. go throw it out 10 feet from here. I'm not going to go through that. So no. Good luck to you. And then have you sue me when a show comes yeah, exactly. up and, and then you but, just say that was my idea yeah. and good luck, but no, I'm not going to read it. And he goes, I don't understand why. And I thought for a second I was going to struggle and like try to explain it to him. But then I said, it doesn't matter to me that you don't understand. <laughs> oh, good for you. <laughs> like, I don't, oh, you're you not. don't have to. Why do I, I have to go? The... Oh, boy, I can't go home till this guy understands why yeah, I won't take yeah. this packet. I just don't want to waste my uh, fucking it doesn't time matter. anymore. I'm going to leave you not understanding why I didn't yeah. take that. Figure it out yourself. <laughs> Let you have that as a life experience this is, yeah. that you just don't know why. Good. I'm the, an asshole. The, the theme today right. is honesty from Louis C.K. A lot of honesty it comes well, from it, it. It's just makes people it easier, right? think that everybody owes them what they want to hear. Yes. You're going to hear some things you don't want to hear sometimes. I lost a, a guy. We He wanted to call, uh, what was the guy's name that died? Larry? Look, we uh, forgot already. Larry. I forgot, <laughs> forgot his fucking Carl. name. It was Carl. Jesus. Oh, Carl. Wow, we wow. suck. Who is that important guy? Oh, uh, God. He probably was hoped fan. that. was hoping that. Uh, his last dying moments were probably like, at least they'll have the reverent, reverently speak of me. Some, yeah. Somebody wanted Anthony to call him show. a deadbeat father because he wanted a divorce from his wheel-bound fucking wife. Yeah, that doesn't sound so hot. <laughs> <laughs> How much trouble could she have been? <laughs> right. Just go in the other just lock up her wheels and go in the other room. You chalk them up. <laughs> Give her a flat tire. You're, you're yeah, on your way. Walk away. Uh, Josh in Maine. Hit her, Josh. Josh. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just got divorced last Friday, and you want to talk to Louie. He's not going to care you got divorced. <laughs> yeah, sorry, man. I'm, having, I'm probably like the happiest man in the whole freaking United States. Probably right not. Now. See, what happened with me, I was one of these idiots that got married to the first uh, girl from high school, and all of a sudden one day you wake up next to this, like, 230-pound fucking sloth in bed beside you, and you realize, oh, my God. Yes. Again, who is <laughs> Again, who is What's so great about you? What's so awesome about you? Like, we're all just cut up. We're all just six-pack bellied. We're all such beautiful guys. Everybody should want to be with us. No, she got fat, really, and you're just beautiful. You're just awesome. Full head of black hair and dark eyebrows and... 
<laughs> Lantern jaw. <laughs> the whole single eyebrow. But I tell you what, man, freaking, I get a paycheck last Friday, and I forgot what it was like to have money. It's like, I don't even know what to do with myself. I took the week off from work to get all the divorce done, and I'm like, I got money in my pocket, and I don't even know what the hell to do with myself now. So you're happy. All right, good luck with that. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Right, guys. What hey, do you, you take it easy. I'm punching out. All right, man. Later. It says, I, it said, divorce last Friday. Just want to shoot the shit with Lou. <laughs> he just wanted to shoot the shit. Shoot right. the shit. Right. Doesn't know Louie well. I guess we shot. He just wanted to shoot the shit with you, Lou. Oh, that's great. Two better men. Than better than shooting. Enjoy their single, uh, <laughs> their single lives. Uh, that's the other thing I can't do is the bullshit talk. The, <laughs> oh, how's that, it going? Oh, pretty good. It's hot small out, huh? Talk. Oh, fucking die. <laughs> die from small the heat. Talk. Oh. Uh, Everybody's got some interesting to say though. That's something I learned from when you do stand up. Before I could afford to like rent a car and just shut out all of society and just you know, <laughs> like now I go rent a, any city I'm in even within for three hours, I rent a car, so I don't have to get driven to the gig, yeah, or picked up at the great. airport by some person. But when I used to get picked up by some person and who was asking me questions about whatever being on TV or whatever, it's so that. tedious. But what I do now is I always ask them about their lives. You just whoever it is, you just go. Where are you from? You know, I'm in Winnipeg, Canada. And I get picked up by some woman. And I'm like, so what's your what's your story? Where are you from? There's always something. Don't you just not? So they'll start talk talking. Well, wow, wow, they're so surprised because people love talking about themselves. Sure. Don't you and just not want to talk those. Well, if, you know, then you just you can shut them out. Then they just run their mouth, and you just have your own thoughts. But occasionally they'll be like, oh, well, I live. Uh, I'm married. My husband has no legs. What? <laughs> wow. All right. We can go run with that. Yeah, well, something to talk your about husband that. can't, but we can. <laughs> <laughs> That's like sometimes I just don't want to fucking talk. And I sure. don't even want to I don't even want to acknowledge by going like, huh, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, that's I know. More painful. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Because then I, I, I'm gritting my teeth, thinking, "Shut the fuck up." Yeah. I don't want to have to make believe I'm acknowledging you. No. Oh, and when you so have tedious. kids, people want to have those conversations with your kids. Oh. They walk up to your kid, "Hi, what are you doing?" It's like she doesn't know you. Yeah. Get the fuck away from her. Can't punch, punch oh. someone in the balls. Punch her in the pussy. <laughs> You're that high. Wait a minute. <laughs> But, yeah. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to hang out with people that I don't want to because of the kid thing, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh fuck. Oh yeah. Me, that ain't gonna be good. Yeah. Other people. Like, I don't care if my kid gets along with other kids that he thinks is no, cool. No, but you got to talk to the dad while they're fuck. hanging out with them. What? How's that? That's awful. I it mean, is right. Yeah, it's awful. I, no, because yeah. this is this conversation we're having. I've been able to avoid people I don't want to be with. That's what your blackberries for. Do you have a blackberry? Oh yeah, I do. You got to have it with you at all the times. And you just stare, so, stare into it while your kid's playing with another so kid. So I'm going to have assholes in my life that I'm going to yeah, have to so deal with. Yeah, you have to become an unapproachable asshole. <laughs> so just be, always be on the BlackBerry. So always be on the BlackBerry. You don't talk to nobody. So when they come to get their kid, what do I do? When they come to get the kid? Yeah. This is down the road. I understand, but might as well get yeah, prepared you're gonna have, now. Yeah. No, you know what? I always trade taking care of somebody's kid for talking to them. Like if my kid has a play date, if my kid has a friend they want to have them, I'll have them over. The kid over, and I'll tell the parent, "You go. I'll take care of your kid. Oh, okay. You go have a day yeah. off." What do you mean? Well, that was in one of the episodes. Which I, yeah, I do it all the time. But I have kids. I'll have wait, two kids the over. The parents come over with the kid and hang out the whole time. No, the parents that ain't go happening. fuck off. No, but I mean, hey, but you have to take care of another person's kid. Yeah, now. I have no problem. But with that. so what? I yeah, I'll easily I do that. Nephews and nieces. But I mean, there are times where the the parent stays. Oh, sure, that happens. Yeah, get the f that ain't happening. No, sometimes or sometimes no it'll happen to kill say because he's in the same class as my kid. Mm. You're gonna have to get to know those people. Some of them are, you know, you make you do make friends that uh, way. Yeah, you know, I could use a few friends, so that's fine. yeah. You'll like some <laughs> of the people that you meet, and then there's other people you won't like, and you and the other parents that you do like will shit on them. <laughs> it just it never becomes ends. like a whole other thing. <laughs> Just the gossip never. No, it ends. gets really vicious too. Really? <laughs> yeah, there's people that are really mean to other people's. Other yeah, kids' parents, and that yeah, right. gets really gross. <laughs> the lean Fuck, lean. I just had a realization. I'm going to have to deal with people that I've avoided for many, many, many yep. years. Yes, Anthony, she's hot. Yeah, have you have time. you tried uh, that one yet? No. Is that is she an intern? Yeah. She's a Ron Fez intern? Got it. Might as well stick around for Ron and Fez. <laughs> What's her name? Uh, I think it starts with an S. 
Oh, thanks. Uh, she's a, uh, that narrows it down. Sam. No, it's not Sam. I would oh, remember that name. He's got a little bit of a pear shape going. No, it's good. a little bit of a the pear shape. Come on. That one looked like Negan. Her hair is a little uh, huh? blow dry. God, you guys are picky. Wow. I'm not saying I wouldn't fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked a lot worse. Exactly. <laughs> I fucked some really disgusting people. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Fucking Louie, man. It was uh, great seeing you, buddy. Yeah, same here, man. Uh, Louis C.K., his new show is called Louie. It premieres next Tuesday. We haven't talked about the show in the last hour, but I'm telling you, I saw the first four episodes, a lot of people in Philly, all loving it. It starts next Tuesday at 11 o'clock, right after Rescue Me on FX. Uh, please check it out and decide for yourself. At least take a peek. I think you're going to like it, though, man. A lot of, a lot of yes. our audience definitely will. Definitely I think will. they'll like it. Oh, hell yeah. I think the Opie and Anthony listening people will and, like it. And it says right here, the show revolves around Louis's hectic life as a <laughs> successful stand-up yeah, comedian whatever. and newly single father <laughs> yeah, raising his two daughters. Yeah. Uh, so, whatever. some good stuff. <laughs> Great language. You get to see yeah. Louis's ass. Yeah, I saw ass plus. Were you, uh, um, the Doctor's episode, which is going to do very well with Ricky Gervais, mm. when he's look, staring at your cock and just beating the shit out of you? And then yeah. brings the lady in. Were you standing there completely nude, or did you have some? Like, I had some. Uh, and did, did you have a sock on or something? Well, or? It's so the the person who we had doing wardrobe then she had a triangle of felt like uh, you use for women. Right. So she had. We had to kind of call together like two or three of those, and she fucking glued them all over my dick. It was a nightmare. <laughs> she didn't have a sock. That's that, what you're supposed to have. Put a sock on right. your dick. But when you would but be, no, I was covered up. He couldn't. I mean, I was probably not fun to look at. But my point, with what was showing, doing the funnel nudity thing, you would definitely do in front of Ricky Gervais. You wouldn't give a shit, right? Well, I wouldn't show him my cock, but you know, oh, you wouldn't just I for wouldn't the goof. Wanna, I wouldn't want to show him my. Well, you cock. showed your cock on Lucky Louie. Yeah, I kind of ran through a room with my dick out. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to stand there with my cock out in front of a man, no. <laughs> that that is mean, a little much. People that do that kind of thing are fucking gross to me. <laughs> no, okay. People yeah. that take out their dick and like rub it on their friend. It's like you're fucking being gay. That really is the weirdest thing. Like the the party pictures where you're teabagging your sleeping friend. Yeah, that's your friend. fucking gay. It's like why would you think that because he's asleep you should put your balls in his mouth? Like, no. that's... that's if I was, he was on a, awake, I was on a would flight. you do that? Is <laughs> I was on a shuttle to Boston years ago, and Jay Moore happened to be on the plane. This is he was in his twenties then, like early twenties. He started pretty young. Yeah, and I'm sitting next to him on the plane because we knew each other, and he's sitting there in shorts, and he go he like looks down at his crotch, and he goes, "If if I take out my cock, will you spit on it?" Like he just said that to be gross or whatever, and I just decided in that moment I don't like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like him, and I haven't. And I, I know Jay, you know, and we're kind of friends. But I can't. I still will go back to that moment. I'm like, that was fucking disgusting, and fuck him, fucking fake faggot. I just it makes me sick. You know what? I think we've so all that's seen... still that's still Jay to me. I can't uh, help it. And funny. I have affection for him. He's a nice guy. We've but... all seen uh, Jay's cock way too many times. Uh, yeah, he's yeah, one yeah. of those guys who likes to way take his dick times. out. Yeah. Like, yeah. Keep your fucking penis hidden. He'll pull it right out. Yep. Birthday parties. I'm not going to fucking birthday parties. You got to do all that shit. Birthday parties, Lou. What? Birthday parties with the kids? Yeah. You got to do all what that. What do you do there? You know what? When you get shut in in the house with the babies for long enough, you actually start appreciating that stuff. So you're going to putting your kids in the middle with all the other kids? Right. And then you hang out with the parents. Well, when we were growing there's up, one, there's always one you walk walk around the uh, house, the birthday party looking tense. Right. And there'll be one guy who probably you wouldn't have talked to in Real life. life, otherwise, but right. you're like, oh, in real life. he's here. A guy that uh, you, I love right. talking to him, or a, or a woman that's kind of like kind of haggard looking, but her tits are interesting. So, <laughs> and she's got a sense of humor. So you'll like talking to her. You'll start to see people that you like. Oh, I kind of like her. Some about it. She's fun. She's fun to talk to. But I know this is an easy bit. But when we yeah. were growing up, we had none of this shit. The yeah, parents you just went outside the door. Right. The parents didn't show up at the parties and hang out while the kids were hanging that out. That is it why was, it's it harder this, for There us. was a major separation. Yeah. Like you said, yeah, you open the door and, and, and there was you a whole life out, the out door. there. My mom, I was raised by a working mom, and in the morning, we would all get ready, and she'd go to work, and we'd go to school. I, since I was in second grade, I would walk to school by myself. Mm -hmm. She would just be like, I'll see you when I get home after dinner. Right. 
Yeah, yeah. And then I'd go to school, and, and then after assumed... school, it was up to me to figure out what to do with myself. And she just assumed you were all right. Yeah, and then I, and then she'd come somebody... home from work, and she'd be like, "Oh, I got kids. my kids are still around." That's how shit happened. <laughs> that's the way it was yeah. like every day for year for my whole childhood. And that's why a lot of kids got touched. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. <laughs> think about there it. There was a fucking child molester in <laughs> right. my neighborhood, just waiting for mommy to go to work. Yeah, there was a guy named Jean Baptiste who used to drive around in a Jean Pinto, Baptiste. and every kid I knew except for me and. I I used to honestly feel a little unattractive that he never <laughs> hit on me. Out. You want at least to be He'd hit take on. you to, when you hit around teenage years, John Baptiste would take you to lunch, Ooh. and then he'd put his hand on your leg, and every kid had a different toleration point of how long <laughs> he let him put him on his leg, put on his hand on his leg. You should have said, if I pull my cock out, will you spit on yeah, it? Exactly. It might have turned them off. <laughs> but now, now the kids just don't. But now really you're responsible for every moment of their lives. Now you got to take them through everything. Remember, your mom, I mean, would just drop you off and then go, "All right, yeah. call me when you need a ride." Yeah, that's that's how we all grew up, right? That's the way it was. But now, no, I I, I have kids over my house, or I take my kid to their house, and, uh, and I can't imagine a day thing. where my daughter just walks, just leaves the house really? unattended. I can't imagine it. I don't I don't know how to process that. That's gonna fuck you up. Yeah. I remember taking those bike rides with like your hey, friends, like and, and three, four yeah. towns so over, often, like there's nothing. Every so often, you'd go be like, "Let's take a real long yeah. fucking yeah. bike ride," and you'd go like, "Yeah, a couple of towns over." Yeah. Instead of your normal, just riding your bike around you'd the go block. Go to the shit. woods and find a dead cat or something. Or <laughs> yeah, something poke weird, it with a stick for a while. Retarded and... girl who shows her bush to people. Whatever. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that was the way it was. I was growing up back why then when every... your parents left you alone. Why does everyone know a retarded girl that? Would... You used to show her bush. bush. Yeah, you know how many times that, have, that that has come up on this show? Loved doing that, I guess. I don't know. No, it's the way it was. Now but people want to talk about kid parties. They want to warn me about Little League and all this other shit. Look, man, it's, I'm only six weeks. I'm six weeks in. I'm, I'm no, it's a now. while. I'm good for you. now. <laughs> Louis, thank you, brother. Sure, man. Uh, Louis CK on Twitter, too, man. He's a good one to follow. You you didn't like that shit at first, I remember. Now you're all I still, in. I'm not crazy about it. I still don't like I regret Every time I tweet, then I go, oh, I shouldn't have said that. And 100,000 people read it. Yeah. That's just something about that is weird to me. I'll take it's some, dangerous. I'll, I'll take some of your 100,000 if you're not no. liking them. That's weird. Squeeze them over to my side. I'll take them. <laughs> I'll take those fuckers. Uh, people get mad at me because I don't follow anybody. But I, what It's if, hilarious oh, yeah, yeah, you don't. It's, no, I have zero. I have follow zero people. Why would it's, I follow somebody? What would I get out of that? I read what they tweet. Girls. I don't give a shit. It's hilarious that you don't. You have a hundred thousand followers, and then it says following a big zero. That fucking zero. That, that is you good. Know, you know how much of an asshole one, you got to be to have one that? would ruin that. If it even said one, it would ruin it. Well, Conan has the fact one. that it says zero is your, hysterical. Your buddy yeah. Conan has one. Has one that he follows. As a goof, he he follows one. Like I thought about following Sarah Palin. I was thinking maybe just ah, her. You no, go. you guys stay. You guys stay. I'm with gonna the, stay at the zero. big fat donut. Uh, you got some there, Ed? Yes, of course. Tonight, uh, Red Eye. On oh, right, right, Fox right. Fox News Channel. Uh, Jimmy is going to be hosting. Oh, why Jimmy is... Norton is hosting, and I will be a guest on there. Let Jimmy do the plug. With uh, Jimmy. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Jimmy. Jimmy. his head. He doesn't want to do the plug. Jimmy, right, what continue. are you doing? Why are you being so quiet? He doesn't want to do it. He's got laryngitis today. Mm. No, he doesn't. He's going to be great on uh, Red Eye. And he's, he's hosting, which should be uh, very funny. You've got me and him. And uh, some blonde chick with real long legs that uh, Coulter. is, a, is a, a Republican. That's uh, yes, so, and Colt. So you and Jimmy doing red eye, and I'll make a video that five thousand people will see. <laughs> no, that's great. My, my, my career's going great. Videos are fun. And of course, what is this? Uh, July second and third, uh, Atlantic City, the Borgata Hotel Casino. Uh, Jimmy Norton will be there. Um, and go to uh, Borgata, the Borgata dot com for uh, tickets. Why didn't he do his own plug? Because um, those are the two things that I'm going to be at too. Ah, <laughs> take it by yourself. <laughs> exactly. All right, Louis C.K. Thanks. Uh, we leave you with this. Derek uh, put together a little Bob Kelly rap thing when Bob oh, Kelly was shit. freestyling in here. You I might remember to that from last week. Smack him in the head. Uh, Derek did something with that audio. All right, ready? I'm hanging on the 
show with my friend Ant and Greg. We all of a sudden start to eat eggs. We put them down and talk into the mic. Because you know we don't like to fuck the dice. We like pussy. And it's got to be juicy. Don't laugh at me, Anthony, while I'm on the mic. You might not know how to fuck a dyke. I'll say it twice. You don't give a shit. Opie has a smile that makes you go, wow. Anthony has hair that makes you go, he. Opie has a smile that makes you go, wow. Anthony has a cock that makes me go, dude. Fuck you. You know and that dog you had is a fucking mutt. Opie had the right moves because the steak was on the floor and his potatoes weren't there no more. So he killed that motherfucker rough, rough, rough. But you know what? It wasn't that guff. Look it up in the dictionary if you don't know what I mean because I don't have time to show you the team of the A, the Rampage Jackson. You know I'm a fraction of what I should have been a long time ago. But I'll keep rapping. You don't hate this. You don't even know. I'll throw it in right in the middle. I'm so fucking wow. I eat Skittles. Ah, uh, yeah. Opie has a smile that makes you go, wow. Anthony has hair that makes you go, he. Opie has a smile that makes you go, wow. Anthony has a cock that makes me go, dude. I'm not done. Fuck that. I'll make it jack. And then I'll look back on the guy with the heart attack that saw Sasquatch in the woods. All of a sudden, he has the word goods in his fucking mouth because he had a gun made of a stick. All of a sudden, you had to pick. Did you know him? Did you know her? Or did you like it? White girls like me. Black girls like me. Girls adore me. Even the ones that even saw me know I ain't rhyme at a fucking show. Why? I don't know. I'll steal a fucking rap from a hoe. I don't give a shit. I'll move on. Push another button. I'll flow. With it. You don't even got no fucking show without it. Yo, I'm Bob Kelly. I'm a rapping genius. Opie has a smile that makes you go, wow. Anthony has hair that makes you go, he. Opie has a smile that makes you go, wow. Anthony has a cock that makes me go, dude.